Double six. Green shot on the second leg. A masterful finishing Matsu. there from Haruki Miramatsu. Ooh, double 18. He can find double the double. double leg, Harry some of that. Is he going to finish with a 130? Yes, Green he is. On the first leg. We're looking at double 13. Oh, Game a little dose of Mindy's leg. medicine. Hi there, welcome along to the Modus Super Series, the home of Pure Darts. No one in the crowd making whistling noises, putting the players off, anything like that here at the Live Lounge. The players will play in the perfect conditions and we've got the perfect man to talk you through it. A former Premier League champion in Glenn Durant. Um, and a great lineup that we've just seen there, this Group B. The players that dropped in from Group A earlier in the week and a couple of good new additions, especially Joe Mernon. Yeah, I must admit, I'm looking forward to seeing Joe Mernon play. He's uh, been through his own problems. Let's just say that he's been a, a professional player for a long time. Um, but I had a few health issues and that's affected his form as well. Openly admitted he's not in the best of form, which sounds very reminiscent of an interview I did moments before you come on here. I mean, he'll be used to a different scene. I just hope it's, uh, it starts well for him. Yeah, maybe he said a relief and he will see that interview in a, in a few moments' time. But players of his calibre, he's won a lot of titles. It's a good coup for us at the Super Series and a, and a good place for him to play darts as well. It's where players want to be now. He's not the only player that's been at Q School and then, you know, being here very quickly. People enjoy being here. He's absolutely loving the whole building, loving the setup. And, you know, like I said, we've said it many times, this throw is one of the best I've ever played on, whether it's amateur darts or professional darts. You know, he's really pleased to be here and good luck to him. Yeah, it's been a good mix this week of new and old, if you like. And Chris Gilliland won Group A earlier in the week, a man who's been involved in this concept since the days in Southampton a few years ago. He got through that group, and the couple of players that are in this group really pushed him hard. It was a close-run thing in uh, Group A, but Haruki Muramatsu and Carl Sneed, how well they played means they will be dangerous for the likes of Mernon, Harrington and Gregory. Yeah, it was like I said, we had a fabulous Group C today as well. And the, the Group B reminds me very much of, is it the fresh players coming in against that tough grind of the Group A and then being on your fourth day here. However, Group B is another full day of rest, playing at a time where they used to play in darts. And uh, I thought Haruki Muramatsu got better as the week went on. And Carl Sneed's very understated player, He's never really going to get the headlines. Just a, a left-hander that can do some real damage there. So I think all five players will think they can get in the top three, and that makes it exciting. Yeah, really interesting. And it will be really interesting to see how the bookies have priced it up. So we'll do that now. Here are the odds, the outright betting. This is to win the group. They've gone for Haruki Muramatsu as favourite. Joe Mernon, maybe some uncertainty about how he's playing there. Ryan Harrington, who reached the final last time he was here, a bit of an outsider at 7-1. to one. Harry Gregory, the bottom of the field. Well, the bookies don't often get it wrong, but I must admit there was raised eyebrows when I... I you know, I understand with Joe Mernon, he's the unknown quantity. You know, you could have him at 10-1, to one, you could have him at odds on, because they really don't know. Their odds could fluctuate from his first three darts, uh, but I do like the look of Ryan Harrington. You know, I'm a big play horses for courses, and he just likes it here. He's had a semi-final. He's had a final here last time as well. Seven to one looks pretty inviting. Yeah, if you are going to have a bet, of course, do so responsibly. It's 18 plus begamblerware.org for information about safer gambling. And that, of course, applies to the bet builder as well. We will show you that. This is the treble for this evening, the most popular bets on the market. And Harrington, who we just mentioned, to win the match against Carl Sneed, the ADC qualified great performance so far for him this week. In fact, five wins yesterday. Uh, the match between him and Muramatsu to have at least two maximums and Gregory to be beaten by Muramatsu. That pays six to one. Just over thoughts on that? I think that is the best bet builder of the week. So if there was going to be a winner, tonight could be the one. I quite like the look of that one. I think the first one is a real 50-50. You know, the second one will just depend on how uh, Muramatsu sort of plays. I think Sneed's always got a 180 in him. I quite like that. Yep. I, if you do have a bet, as we said, do so responsibly. Um, Glenn, what about you this evening? There, there are new players coming in, the players that have been here before. Who do you think is going to get off to a good start and who do you think might struggle? Yeah, there's a real Manchester feel, isn't there, with Carl Sneed, Joe Mern and Harry Gregory. So it has that feel as well. Like I said, I'm interested. Ryan Harrington's not as sharp as the other players. You know, hasn't played an awful lot of darts uh, as recently. Uh, Harry Gregory, 
is he too, you know, is he young? And I've been sort of following his career the past couple of years, and I really have no idea with Joe Mernon. Uh, very much like when I stepped on this hockey, a lot of people weren't really sure what I was going to do. Uh, whereas Muramatsu has just got better as the weeks went on. Be nice for someone like Carl Sneed to get the headlines. Look, uh, if I'm sitting on the fence, I apologise, but I just think all five are in there thinking maybe I've got a great shout tonight and I'll be as keen as anyone to see how people start because this Group B format means you want to come out the blocks quickly and it could be a very interesting start. Yeah, remember, three go through from this group, so every chance for all of the players. But we did refer to that Joe Mernon interview earlier in our chat and Scott Mitchell conducted that earlier this evening. So, Joe Mernon, welcome to the Super Series. Uh, where, where's your game right now? Uh, I wouldn't say it's in the best place, but it's improving. Um, I wasn't very well over Christmas and before then, and all last year, to be honest with you. Um, but everything's looking good now, and I'm pretty much where I should be. Obviously, you had a tour card for so long. It seemed that forever you were a tour card holder. Um, how does it feel about coming off? I mean, I've, I've experienced it. Uh, it, it. It doesn't always hit you in the right place, does it? It's, I think it's a bit of a relief, to be honest with you. Uh, no pressure now. I can just, I'm going to chill out for a year, to be honest with you, and just pick what I want to do, do things what I want to do. So, you, you know, the doors have opened up for you. Everybody keeps saying sometimes it's nice not to have a tour card. What are your plans for 2024 without one? Well... I'm going to do the challenge to us. I, I don't think I'm going to go to Germany. Like I said, I'm going to pick and choose. But stuff like my order set, I'm, I'm thrilled that I've been invited to do it. So, yeah, I'm going to do it. You've had a quick look around the place. You've been here a little while. What do you think of it? I think it's amazing. I, like I said, I'm a fan. I watch it. So, you know, I'm looking forward to next week more than me on. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing you up there on that stage. So have a good evening. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, we've been waiting for tonight, Joe, to see you in action. And it is a debut for Joe Mernon, a winner, of course, of a PDC professional event, along with a couple of Challenge Tour titles as well. They, nine years ago now, has, of course, appeared on the biggest stage of all at the Ali Pali at the World Darts Championship. He takes on Haruki Muramatsu in the opening match of this evening. And the two men in commentary for all ten of tonight's fixtures are Glenn Durant and Scott Mitchell. First game here of Group B and Joe Mernon is, uh, oh man, this evening, it's good to see him. And I, what I liked about that little interview, Glenn, was that he enjoys watching the Moda Super Series, as a lot of players do now. Yeah, Joe often messages uh, when I'm sat in the comms box as well. And uh, I'm actually a little bit nervous for him. Um, it feels a little reminiscent of when I got on that stage where I wasn't really sure practice was going well. And I just think if he can get up and running here, maybe Mace, now referee, Joe really looking to forward first. to tonight's play as well. Game on. But yeah, these three darts will be probably the most nerve wracking he's been for a while. And yeah, you just want to sort of get underway and not the start he particularly Nine. wanted. But you can just sense and feel every dart. And Muramatsu will. You know, he's the type of player, he's very experienced, definitely got better as the week went along. And like I said, I was a surprising favourite for the group for 59. me, Scott. I don't know what you felt of those better nods, but they don't often get it wrong. No, I think what they've done with Miramatsu is they've watched him progress and get better as the week's gone on. And I think the same has happened with Mikuru as well. So uh, maybe there's a little bit of that in, in the line of thought to... Where 26. Haruki is. But it's a strange one when, like you say, the clientele that's in this group and Joe Mernon is six class personified, but it's the way that the betting works, and we will see whether they are right or wrong. 99. Yeah, Joe Mernon, I remember going back to my BDO days, he was. Uh, I never had a great record against him then, and I always found him a very tough opponent to play. 62. Like I said, well, I used to sit with him as well at some of the uh, Hildesheim Pro Tours, and like I said, he just sort of hit the skids a little bit, and 
I think I said you know, a lot of that was down to more health issues right, and physical rather than a problem with his game. But it sounds like he's got a clear plan of what 2024 is all about and just really chilling out for a year was, 65. I think, the term he used with you. And he'll want to be a professional player again. He's still only 40 year old, so you know, time's on his side. And maybe just using the Motor Super Series, Scott, as a, as a real platform. Yeah, 58. yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's something that he has to do. And uh, it, 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 when, when you lose your card, it feels like you fell off the horse 59. a little bit. And Haruki requires one. There's a lot of tension on the pro tours, and you feel as a player when you drop off that that you fell off the horse. But there are other horses to ride when you come off of that horse. So. 92. Um, you have to Joe requires enjoy what's around you, and I think he's going to do exactly that. Well, it's his first finish here at the Motor Super Series. Like I said, openly 60. admits to being a big fan, and it'll feel strange this first 72. leg. Like we said, Muramatsu hasn't come out the traps very quickly. It's been a pretty disappointing leg from the pair of them. And the first double will be with the man from Japan. 32. A chance for Joe Mern, and let me tell Joe you, this would really settle his nerves. It's been a nervy leg for sure. Forty-six. Yeah, the longer that he struggles on the scoring the and the finishing 40. as well, good chance for Muramatsu. I think he'll sense he's got a big chance here. Sensing's only one thing. You've got to execute the doubles, Game and he gets there the in the end. Leg. And the fact Haruki it was the last start of the double, two. Scott. These could be difficult moments for Joe Mernon. One, the relief of that first leg over, but now he's thinking, Second I just leg. want to get a leg Haruki on the board, a match win under there. Game on. But uh, this experienced man from Japan, 15 to 8 favourite to win the group. He'll have to play better than he is at the moment, but he is leading 1 0. Yeah, absolutely. And I've. I've been looking at those darts all week and I actually snuck into the practice room this evening and and got a little throw with Miramatsu's darts and uh yeah they were they were every they, they look a very bold start here on camera but when you actually go and have a throw with them they they are not that big they are not that big and uh yeah the grip was in just well the lack of grip or wherever the ball was it was just lovely for my throw I had uh I think I think it's 62 and, and 85. So 30 in the two throws I had. So I was happy to get finally get a throw with them. And well, wow, lovely balance on them. I thought they wouldn't be balanced because of the shape that they are, but they were a lovely balance. 140. Yeah, I think he has a lovely balance to the throw as well. 140. Certainly a lot more pace in the throw there for Joan. Joe is a player's championship winner. This is going back to 2015, but just reading it in that competition in the last eight. 54. He beat Stephen Bunting in the semis, he beat Daryl Gurney, and then beat Chizzy in the final with a 99.09 average. 100. So that's the pedigree that Joe Mernon has. Looking good to level up here. It would be a breaker throw as well. Forty-five. Joe requires ninety-one. So eighty-two going now. He's gone the ball route. Seventy-six. He'll go back up the 30. top. Chance for Haruki here to put some pressure on this. Yeah, one of the problems for Joe is that. When you go a long period, Scott, without winning games, you Joe forget to see 61. out the game. And that set-up player will disappoint me. That's a beautiful day. His best start of the game, John, the second the day leg. already. And that's set up a beautiful 61 finish. And right now, all of a sudden, you'll be able to start breathing again. It's as if you're, you're so taut, you're Third so leg. tense Joe and full of anxiety. First. Game on. The break back. and He holds his throat and keeps it simple. 100. Your man will be feeling a million times better. Yeah, and you, you get a little bit rusty as well, don't you? You know, when you're not playing a lot, you, you feel match rusty. And again, that's a 100. mindset thing. You, you feel that you haven't quite done enough of whatever. I mean, this is a lovely place to come and because you don't not feel rusty after a couple of games here. They come thick and fast. 
98. Much better from Muramatsu. 140. Yeah, lots better there. Forty four. Two breaker throws in this match already, and all in this leg, Haruki has stolen the throw with darts like that has now become a big favourite. Ton ton forty ton forty from the man from Japan. PDC Asian champion in two thousand and twenty three. 137. Haruki requires 121. Haruki has effectively stolen the darts here. Treble 17. Bullseye for... Oh, 96. Lucky. Joe requires 122. On the blade of the ball. Couldn't get any closer. 90. So pressure Haruki asserted now from Mern into the... 25 of Muramatsu is gone. One for double 12. Double six. 19. Joe requires 32. Joe Mern after a very, very ropey first leg. Has a dart away now to take the lead here in this first match of the night. Game shot on the third leg. Joe Mernon. Yes, he just brushes off the first two. Starts to take that 2 1 lead. Muramatsu will be really Haruki disappointed with the progress. scenario at the moment. Game on. He doesn't give an awful lot away, does Haruki? We did mention this afternoon. Was he going to be inspired the way that Mur 87. The way that Suzuki played this afternoon. Like I said, he's probably in that player's area and his English isn't very good. And we might have to just do what 100. Suzuki did and just sort of focused on her own game. Makura was superb today, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. One hundred and thirty-seven. Undoubtedly, a little unlucky to end up where she did in the end, but it was. We said fast improvement on what she'd been doing. One hundred. She's still in the mix for tomorrow. Fifty-five. is better from Joe Scott. You can see he's beginning to settle now, can't you? Doesn't matter how experienced you are when you first stand on a, a stage where the cameras are there, people are watching, the nerves will be just like there was when he played that Players' Championship final. Yeah, definitely. And... Joe requires 161. Effectively turn the throw on Muramatsu here. Go on the sensible route. One, two, one, leaves top. Muramatsu without shot. He needs one, three, eight, you would imagine here. Yeah, both averages are now on the increase. So it was a pretty dodgy first leg. But to be fair, since then, that requires 40. Both beginning to find the treble. Can Mernon find the Game double? Yes, he can. He leg. leads 3 1. Joe much, Mernon. much better from Mr. Mernon. And he has the darts as well. If he goes a distance, he'll have darts in two of the Joe last three the legs. So, big Game advantage. On. 85. A little time to get used to the surroundings and the feel of the place. But and then we'll probably tell you, he keeps things simple. It's just a dartboard in another place. That's all it is. One hundred. 80 there for Miramatsu, just to let Joe know he's not going away, but... 99. 100. Better from Haruki. I just felt on Monday he started very... Very nervously. Just got better. And I think come Wednesday, was, there was a point where 45. he was topping the group as well. 
Hence the reason I think he's gone into this Group B as the, the bookies' favourite. But right now, Joel Mernon is looking good for victory. 81. Rookie gets the odd one off here. Eighty-five. Haruki requires one hundred and forty to reduce the deficit. He'd be thinking at least a hundred. That jaw can't finish on one eighty-seven and gets that one hundred. Much, much better. This is the best leg from Haruki. Eighty-one. It's a little lackadaisical there with the last 40. start there. However, it's in the hands of Muramatsu. Only one from eight now on the outer ring, so we'll need this double ten to go. You don't want to give Joe a free shot at this 106, 30. and he will get it. Joe requires 106. Yeah, he's starting at the top, and that's a 10 or a 6. 10, double 18. 88. Oh, on the wire. Haruki this requires isn't a gimme 10. for Haruki here. Double five. You've got to go full bore at it first start. Gonna split it. That was the dart to do it. Not with that one. Well, you've still got one in your hand. The strategy was total no opposite score. to what Scott said Joe there. Joe requires 18. Joe Mernon on debut here at the Morda Super Series. Can he start with victory? Yes, he Game can. Shot. A fantastic start. Anna, it was a very nervy opener from Joe Mernon, but let me tell you, he's played at the very highest levels. But he's one relieved man. A big fan of the Morda Super Series. And for the bookies' favour, Haruki Muramata, that was a very disappointing display there. One from 12 on the outer ring from the man from Japan. He'll be back on the practice ball. But it's Joe Mernon who's up and running as we look at game two. It's Ryan Harrington against Carl Sneed. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where before the break, Mernon proved that he's no ordinary Joe. A 4-1 win against Haruki Muramatsu on his debut 
But now attention turns to a couple of players who have been here before. One has been here this week in Carl Sneed. Second in Group A, more on that in a moment. But Ryan Harrington, well, he made it all the way through to the final when he was in the previous series last September. Lost a thriller as well to Sweden's Anton Ersland. This man, Sneed, well, he missed out on qualification for finals night on leg difference after an excellent Group A campaign. He comes into this one as well on the back of winning his last five matches. Can he get a six in a row against the animal Ryan Harrington? We'll find out in the company of Glenn Durant and Scott Mitchell. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Say a couple of players. Who I say, Carl Sneed, he was a bit of a slow starter this week, but came to the fore. First leg, Ryan to throw first. Late on Game on. on. Day three, got himself to the... Almost the top of Group A. As you say, Ryan Harrington has the pedigree, a former tour card holder. Played in things 57. like the Grand Slams, the Euro Tour, UK Open, Players Championships, and I don't know, 112 Pro Tours. So he knows all about 58. this game, without doubt. Yeah, his averages at uh, Q School and Challenge to were just a little 81. bit less than where Ryan's game is normally at. Very tough character to play. Really enjoys that stage. Like I said, been to the final and semi final. So I thought he was the interesting 81. price at 7 to 1. Yeah, I agree with you. I think. 100. What do you say? Rookies don't usually get it wrong, but for me, that was a good price. And yeah, a lot of his averages that sort of challenge to it. 100. Around about that mid to, to late 80 averages. You know, beat players like Nick Fulwell. Looks like one of his better games, but he would have hoped to have got back on the circuit. But right now, this is his focus. I don't think he's really counted very well 95. there, but the trouble's enough. It does leave a bogey. They're playing a very interesting character in Carl Sneed. Thoroughly enjoyed watching him play. 58. Oh, it's Ryan, 60. the son of Rod Harrington. No doubt he'll be sick of hearing that every five minutes. Just one of those groups, Scott, isn't it, where I just feel all five 82. players will think they can qualify Ryan from here. 108. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think we, we spoke about the group being wide open in Group C today. And I think 92. B campaign is, is a very similar 102. situation. But with this, there's only five in the group. You only get four games an evening and it can pass you by fairly quickly 90. if you're not careful i played in b Ryan group b once and that's 16. what i found before you know it the night was over and he cannot get any closer than that game chart and the well deserved leg. last start Ryan harrington second leg call to throw first game on One hundred and forty. Good start here from Sneed. Yeah, he won't be worried about not winning that first one without the darts. One hundred and forty. Just looks really solid. Like I said, he likes that. He likes this stage. Forty-two. One hundred and yeah, just what I was hoping for for Ryan Harrington. Like I said, I wasn't. You, you, you can go through all the stats at Q School, all the stats at the Challenge too, and you can 57. make an as assumption and assessment that maybe his game's not exactly where it wants to be. But I think he looks super solid right now, and I thought I think those seven to one odds look pretty 100. inviting. 
Looking good for 2 0 here. Seventy-eight. Ryan requires one hundred and twenty-four. Sneed is on one eight four. Might change the strategy. Treble eighteen will be the shot, no matter what. The reason I said that that first out looks 16. such an awful blocker for. I can understand the process of leaving it and setting it up, but you would think that wide open bed and it just gives a bit of a an opening for Carl Sneed. 140. Yeah, it did Ryan indeed. And 64. That's where sometimes that last dart, instead of going for a 20, Ryan, maybe she could have gone for a, a 25 and left himself 59. 48. Give himself two darts at it rather Cole than just the one 44. under pressure. Yeah, for the first time in this match, real positivity for Sneed. Been pretty dominant from Ryan Harrant, but you have to say he's made a bit of a mess up with that 1 2 4 layup and finish. That's the goal. It doesn't for Sneed. He does seem to Ryan get these opportunities, 16. does Carl, and just doesn't often see them out. Chance for Harrington. Game show on the second leg. He leads 2 0. Ryan Harrington. Yeah. Breaks the throw. Third leg. Ryan to throw first. Game on. Momentum now with Ryan Harrington, especially with the throw in. 140. And he goes with the 140. One hundred and forty. Yeah, Ryan had a very, very disappointing Q school. He played the opening three days and lost in the prelim round in all three. Performances were better. Thirty-seven. The challenge to it. I think I've seen enough from him today to say that even last time he was he wasn't playing his brilliant best, but he 100. knows how to win games. He's one of those dogged indiv individuals. And that's what I'm seeing with him. I think he'll fancy his chances now. Yeah, very much so. He is one of those individuals. And 26. I mentioned earlier this afternoon that some players will play the opposition and go up and down with their averages. And Thought that Suzuki, the better the players played against her, 95. she was able to go with it and could label Harrington as one of those, really. Would you use the 18 here, but that first start was 16. such a good marker. And now I think he wishes he did go for the 18s as he bashes into that second dart. Yeah, 60 floor there for Brian Harrington. 44. Ryan requires 138. 73 left, treble 19 or treble 11. He'd be looking at sensible is the 19 because it'll leave a two data. Carl requires 120. Good board management need, needs this. Treble 18 for sure. Forty-one. Disappointing start Ryan to the day this for Carl, 54. isn't it? I think we both had high expectations. Yeah, he hasn't kicked off today like he finished yesterday, which was what we were hoping. Thirty-four. It's an opportunity Carl and eighty-one. You know, eighty-one here would get him right back in the game. Well, bullseye now or double thirteen. Game and lovely, the lovely leg. 81. Carl Sneed. Yes, first real moment of this match, Scott. He's been, yeah, you can see he's chatting away. Fourth leg, thinking, Carl to throw first. It just hasn't been my match Game this on. one. Yeah, I'm now in it because of one big finish. And it's as if he's just pressed the res reset button there, that realisation it's his darts first. Fresh impetus, maybe. But with them first two darts, Scott, you wouldn't think 41. so. No, I, I think when he finished the day yesterday, we both noticed he was playing a little quicker, wasn't he? And and that seemed to be more fluidity with the throw when 81. he was throwing a little quicker. 60. Those were better darts, the first two, to not keep blocking the target. Oh, 
139. Yeah, whenever I watch Ryan, I always think you're going to see a mid-80s average. He's going to be dogged. He's going to fight hard. He's going to be scrappy. I think to win 96. these Motor Super Series, you need to have that real A game as well. So that's one thing I'm looking for for Ryan. Uh, but apart from that, I think he's been really dominant in this match. 125. Ryan's next game will be against Hiroki, who's had a disappointing start. So, the two guys that came from Group A. This has 100. Been a pretty disappointing Ryan start for the pair of them. When you think, Scott, the two lying top in Group C are both the fresh 60. players as well. That discussion we had earlier, fresh versus Group A contenders. At the moment, the fresh players coming in today. They seem to be winning. 140. Yes, they do, but Ryan that's a good visit. 96. From Sneed here. Pressure in the 96, but Harrington's right in the lipstick with the first. Easier to hit it, surely. Game Absolutely the used the dart well. Ryan Harrington. And nice. As nice as the 81 was from Carl Sneed in the previous leg. That 96 breaks Fifth straight leg. back. Ryan to throw first. Game on. Yeah, moment of the night so far for me, that for Ryan Harrington, that was real quality, as Scott mentioned there, that 140 setup play for Carl Sneed. All of a sudden, 44. he was potentially looking really good for 2-2. Two -two. That 96, beautiful in the treble 20. Use that marker of the double 18. Ryan Harrington now can see that 100. winning line. Can he see it out? Ninety-seven. Well, we'll see the final player of the week in the next game, Scott and Harry Gregory. I don't think Chris Gilliland will be too nervous of what he's seen since he's had a couple of days in his hotel room. Eighty-one. No, I don't think he will. Um, wonder if he's been and found somewhere to have a throw. I suppose Saturday night we'll find out when we next see him 96. again. But Fifty-seven. Seems to be fighting with himself at the moment, does Carl? And all of a sudden, Carl has gone from that ADC qualifier to that real expectation now. Second favourite before 94. a doubt was thrown in this Group B campaign. But the two top dogs with the Vokies. It could be moments away from opening defeat for the pair of them. Ninety-seven. Ryan requires 170. Another clear demonstration of poor board management there from Sneed. But six darts and 170 for Harrington. 58. 44. Those throws sometimes come off the Ryan back of bad board, board management, don't they? Where you you know you've made a mistake and it's still going through your mind. It just doesn't seem to be at the races, does Carl Sneed? And I think Ryan Harrington smells blood. Double 68 for the match. 80. Carl requires 122. So the left-hander, plenty of space there for the 54 shot now. Even though he moves over, not to be. He'll stay there, try and score 90. 54. But Harrington, Ryan 32 for the 32. match. He's a proven winner, is Ryan Harrington at the Motor Game. Super Series. Shot. And once again, and he has match. that winning feeling on that stage again. A very disappointing display there from Carl Sneed. He showed so much promise in his Group A campaign. But Ryan Harrington will be absolutely delighted to get two points on the board. You know there's plenty more on the tank. The 96 finish being the highlight. But a lovely star from Ryan. As next up, we see for the first time, Harry Gregory playing Joe Mernon.
And the Group B action continues here at the darting Dreamland that is the Modus Super Series, or at least the darts that stops you going to Dreamland. And featuring in tonight's action is the man formerly known as Midnight, Joe Mernon. Made a dream debut as well, a 4-1 success in his first match on that stage just half an hour ago when he beat Haruki Muramatsu, the favourite to win this group. Mernon in this one takes on the returning youngster, Harry Gregory, who did appear at the back end of last year. Won a handful of games in the same group, the 18-year-old Mancunian looking to better that performance and get through Group B. But it will be a tough ask against his fellow Greater Manchester player Mernon, now at the age of 40, off the tour, into the Super Series, and he started pretty well. Glenn Durant and Scott Mitchell are on hand to talk you through this. Yeah, thanks, Murph. I've not seen a lot of Harry Gregory myself, so I'm looking forward to seeing him this evening. He was one that I wanted to get a little squiz at. And uh, obviously, Joe Mernon, we know lots about, and... Like you say, Harry, Harry to throw JDC first. Super 16 winner back in 2019. And he's had a couple of tour wins on the JDC as well. So it is the breeding ground for success. 100. I'm sure he's uh, going to be doing more on the Dev Tour in 2024. And 77. And just to be in the hotbed of darts that it is. And imagine for a minute that he's not going to be one of those 42. that has a lot of stability. Yeah, same as you, Scott. Really looking forward to seeing Harry Gregg. He's the final player of this week we'll be seeing for the first time. Started playing darts at the age of five. He joined the Stockport Academy when he was seven. And when he was 12, he started playing at the White Lion Pub. One Before he joined the St. Helens Darts Academy, which has been in the news so much. His best friend in darts, Leighton Bennett. He's had a fantastic few weeks himself. 58. Yeah, he has. Have a talk hard recently, Leighton Bennett. 39. He's had a semi-final on the development tour in Hildesheim. 97. Losing to Bradley Brooks that day. Bradley Brooks went on to do big things as well and became a professional player. And no doubt that's where Harry wants to be. 82. The outsider of the pack Terry in this group B. 129. Got a decent start. But for Joe Mernon, it was a, a nervy start of the night. But that 4-1 victory... It seems to be bringing 89. all of a sudden that relaxation into his Harry game now. 98. Just averaging over 92 now. Harry Gregory can't finish. So good start for Mernon. Tops to break. 48. Tops for a Joe 16 dart to Scott. 40. Yeah. Joe is definitely finding his range here this evening. And is he going to find it with this last one? Game yes, he is. The first leg. Joe no point in hitting it first dart and carrying two to the board, Glenn. Is there? You just well chuck all three, have a nice little walk to the board, and then Second pick them back up Joe again. To throw first. Yeah, I feel like Came I'm sort on. of throwing darts for Joe a little bit tonight. It's very similar when I stood on that rocky. The difference being that difficult start he had. I mean, Hiroki was just firing nothing back at him, and as you know, Scott, once you get two points in the board, suddenly the the relaxation in your game. I think he can just 60. go and enjoy the experience now. And he'll have seen everyone play and think, oh, well, do you know, I think I can do absolutely mighty fine in this group. B. And once you get a couple of wins under the belt, you start thinking of automatic qualification already. Yeah, absolutely. And he, and he is that sort of player anyway. When he, he is on the up, when he's on the up, he stays on the up, Joe, isn't he? When he, when he gets going. 46. Well, it's easy to say a lot of players do do that, but... Once Joe starts finding that treble 20, he hasn't often let off. 100. Surprised Harry can see the dark board with that hairstyle. 15. Joe requires 100. new fashion, Scott. I like the way you asked me about that. On the same age as you. I would, well, I would say it's slightly different to yours. That's what I would say. He's got that hair right there at the front over his eyes. It's lovely. 
56. Joe requires 62. It's double top. Got a 2 0 lead. Joe Game Mernon is looking very, leg. very good. Joe 15 Mernon. data. Third leg is Harry to throw first. Game on. I should have asked Joe when I interviewed him whether he had a kind of. We know that he watches the Super Series, but we should have asked him if he had a strategy for Group B and if. And how much of Group B he's watched because 100. Well, it'd be interesting to know that his his feelings on it, or whether he whether he's just one of those that just he's just going to go out there and want to blast every game out. 42. I, I think he would have said, honestly, Scott, I can only think of the first game because I'm not 100 percent sure where my game is at right now, how I'm going to react on there. What's impressed me is that he's not used to winning these days, and I don't I don't mean that disrespectfully and. It's as if someone puts a wall up against you when you get in that position. However, Haruki put nothing up in that first one. And all of a sudden, the game, it just all suddenly starts coming back to you when you get that confidence. And a big win over Harry Gregory here. And Joe Mernon played to one to and can sit down for a while then. Things are looking very rosy for Joe. Forty-two. I do agree in. I wonder whether Harry was going to come up and throw with a bit of freedom. He would have known 60. a lot about Joe. And yeah, it's a strong mank feeling there, isn't it, with Carl and these two as well. 134. Joe, you require 158. One hundred and thirty-four. Harry set requires up play fifty. Of Harry Gregory, first time at the double. It's two darts at tops if he needs them. Big dart early for Harry. Fifteen. Joe Dragged requires it. twenty-four. Dragged it to the left. Feel that Joe won't need any more invitations here. Game shot on the third That's leg. Exactly how it Joe turns Lennon. out to be and. And these short format, short sprint races. Fourth leg, Joe. Fifty percent on the outer ring, Scott. On. That's one thing for Joe at the moment. No issues when he's getting down to a double. There's no concerns. He has the darts here. And he's flying 100. through this game. Sixty-one. Really lovely thrown darts there, but not going to the destination where Harry wanted them. 97. 140. Ninety eight. No disappointment for Harry Gregory with that one, but recovers nicely, particularly if he hits a second one of those. One hundred and nineteen. Yeah. Posted some fantastic numbers at Q School, did Harry? Think we'll chat throughout the night. 124. Well, it's been a difficult start, and Joe Mernon will fancy this 82. Can any pressure come back from Harry? 96. Two good visits to the 19. There's a little bit of pressure applied here from Harry Gregory. But this is for the match. 74. Good talk about his doubles being good. He'll have fancied Harry that. Harry requires 85. Gregory on the 85. 60. Was unlucky, the Joe landing length was absolutely 80. perfect there as he let go. But for Joe Mernon, it's a quick Game fire victory. It's two wins out of two for Joe, Joe Mernon. Mernon. If he had any questions about where his game is at, what he can do in this group B, 
A lot of them have been answered already. He is looking very good, not only for, for wins tonight, but automatic qualification. Joel Mernon averaging over 91 in that game. Super, super start from Joel Mernon. And next up, it was disappointing in his first game, but it's Haruki Muramatsu up against Ryan Harrington. Welcome back to your Thursday night darts fix at the Moda Super Series. And Ryan Harrington is looking to join Joe Mernon in winning two matches off the bat this evening. Haruki Muramatsu, who played really good stuff in Group A, he was beaten 4-1 by Mernon in his opener. And then Harrington stepped forward and got a 4-1 win against Carl Sneed in his first game of the evening. Mernon has since beaten Harry Gregory 4-0. And if Harrington can win this one then only two players will have points to their name. Will that be the case, or will it change and swing in the favour of Muramatsu? We will find out in the company of Scott Mitchell and Glenn Durant. Yeah, thanks, Murph. If you're just joining us, yes, it's Series 6, Week 11, and we are here at Group B on Day 1. Well, game 4, first and lead, Haruki Muramatsu game on. Ryan Harrington. Ryan Harrington won his first game. 4-1, fairly convincingly against Carl Sneed. And Maramatsu went down 4-1 to Joe Mernon. And his levels had dropped off a little bit. It was first game of the evening. Yeah, interesting that Haruki is still a heavy favourite for this match, despite the fact that Haruki was very disappointed in his opening game, as you alluded to. And Ryan Harrington got a, a victory over Carl Sneed. 123. 100. Harrington, quite a powerful 55. thrower. It's a 
Very fast arm action and a force through. Dart flies through the air, very flat. Yeah, really tucks 26. in that elbow, doesn't he? His, the arm's resting on his shoulder. If you haven't been with us this week, Harugi's through like many of the Asian players, so aesthetically pleasing on the 60. eye. Close your eyes and pretty much envisage every dart player in the way they throw a dart in Asia. You can just see him doing the ghost dart, whereas Ryan Harrington, stereotypical throw, of real scrapper, as I said, real fighter. He's looking good tonight. Yeah, he is. He's looking very determined. And like you say, we've said it over the week Ryan where we've had players that really enjoy playing here and all players have favourite venues of their own. And if you've had good runs here and good times here, 73. you tend Harugi to enjoy coming back here. Yeah, Ryan Harrington using the double-double there. Not successful, but lovely set of play. We need to see, need to see something special from Haruki. And that was very, very nearly it. That's unlucky as it just Ryan drifts into the double five, 24. needing tops. Game shot on the first leg. It's Harrington. Ryan Harrington. He takes out double 12 and break a throw. Early doors. Second leg. Ryan to throw first. Game on. Eighty-five. Could be a real separation here in the Group B campaign. Two wins out of two for Joe Mernon. And in the in-play table, if Ryan Harrick can see out this game. But for now, bizarre scenario. We're going to have a couple of players on four points and third place still sat on zero points. Ninety-seven. That won't last long because Carl Sneed against Harry Gregory is up next. Two players searching for the first win. As you look at the throw there of Haruki Muramatsu, PBC Asian champion. Remember last year 100. played at Ali Pali, played at the Grand Slam. That's the pedigree. You can just have a look at the elbow and that throw. The way it dips, he holds it. Not something I'm a particular fan of, unless you were able to dip that elbow at the same place where if you look at Haruki's that elbow is exactly in the same place like I said as a coach 100. as a technical it's a really really nice throw Haruki but it's this man it's not the styles that win 45. some of the board management today again on 259 there Scott should have used the 19s on the second dart yeah it just takes a little glance across doesn't it to work it all out 41. Many reasons why Haruki's played so poorly tonight. You know, I can't. Well, the only thing that's happened differently is I've had two throws of his darts, maybe. 60. That hasn't helped. Well, I did that to Robbie Green, dart Con Green, and he absolutely went crazy with me. Some, play, some players are so superstitious, remember. Bullseye should be the shot with the last, and it 65. is. Oh, I did ask. Ryan I did ask. I said, I said, could I? It was all hand signals, not a lot of chat and go along. 43. Haruki requires 167. 81. Last start just saves him Ryan that. Ryan requires 111. Remember, this would be for a holder throw, but also you feel a decisive lead. You feel he's going to get a dart or a double now. 51 left. Double 16. Game he hasn't John been spectacular leg. tonight, but when Ryan the timing Harrington. of his real successes has to be highlighted and commended. This is good Third stuff leg. from Ryan Haruki Harrington. And the disappointment of the night Game for Haruki. On. He was only won one leg all night. Yeah, it's just, again, not at the levels where he left off. 140. Yesterday, and that will help him a little bit. 
100. One hundred start from somewhere. Scott, but a ton forty ton start for Haruki. But there's Harrington who's looking good. A two nil up. He's on the throw here of Haruki, so no real panic. Forty five. No, not at all at the minute. I'd like to turn the corner here immediately. Ninety five. Fifty-seven. Forty-six. Just all a little bit scrappy, isn't he? He's put himself in a fantastic position. Not an awful lot coming back from Ryan Harrington at the moment, all the way back on 299. 60. Haruki requires 120. Got away with one there, really. Time's on his side. 100. Harrington back on 239. He hasn't hit a treble in his last nine darts. That's why he sat back there and Haruki's on. 44. Double 10. Haruki requires 20. More darts coming in. 100. Game John, the third leg. Well, I think he's Haruki won two legs Muramatsu. tonight, Scott, and both of them have been on double five. But apart from that, it hasn't been a great night for the man from Japan. He takes a sip Fourth of his water leg. there. Ryan to throw first. Game Ryan on. Harrington has got the darts. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Last double five last time out. 57. He's going to win some more legs. Perhaps he's got to leave double five. Who knows? 95. Many congratulations to Michael Smith on his opening win. It's one of the Premier League's opening 85. night tonight in Cardiff. Yes, we did a, a promo yesterday. I'm sure that socials will get out about the Premier League. And I did say that Michael Smith will bounce back in 2024. He's practising hard again. I think that's where the success has come for Michael Smith previously. I think he's lived a year as a champion last year. Opening, he admitted he got a little bit lazy. So it's good to see him back in the winner's circle. 96. Yep, failed to prepare. Be prepared to fail. Should go downstairs. 58. 58. All being one-sided games tonight. Definite difference in the pace on Group C today. It was a very much a rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Whereas tonight, the challenge is just more, it's more methodical. Ryan Harrington certainly likes to chatter away while he's throwing darts. Haruki requires 68. So 56 left. Double 18. 50. Ryan requires 82. Quite a change of scenery there for Miramatsu. Single 17 now for double top for Harrington. 62. Just under. Haruki requires 18. Haruki will go back. He's looking at double nine straight Game away and straight in it goes. So. Haruki Miramatsu. He seems to be enjoying all the odd doubles at the minute, Glenn. Yeah, just a little sign of Big like leg. a, a come on, whatever first. that is in Japan. But Game on. you don't often see an awful lot. And a little shake of the head from Ryan Harrington, who was leading this match 2-0, remember. He's relinquished that lead. 
And also the throw is with Haruki. 60. That just seems a little bit more pace in the game. Yeah. Just been looking in the chat box there. And a, a big well done to Joe Mernon for from Lisa Ashton. So hopefully you're watching, Lisa. Hope you're well. One hundred. Fifty nine. Forty one. Players here at the start of this leg finding a treble. Bit of a speciality here. 60. Well, it's not for the want to try and Scott, because every them bent and wire totally on that score of 60 there. And for Ryan to be thinking everything's going against him right now. He has to take his opportunities. He needs these two points 60. here. 60. One hundred and forty. There's the ghost throw from Haruki. He could do with the one forty to match what Ryan's just done. One hundred. Ryan requires one hundred and sixty. From Miramatsu. Sixty for Harrington. It's not going this time. He will stay there. Ah, uh, comes out for the sixteens. Haruki requires 140. I just sense that this match needs a real injection of something and a real big finish. Not to be for Haruki. A treble loss leaves him sitting pretty. 60. Not an awful lot Ryan of pressure for Ryan on. 64. Can have a real good go at the 64. You look at the 16s. He's going to get one dart. Where's he going? Eight to 16s. Going for 16s. Leaving double 16. 32. Yeah, so Haruki oh, requires yeah. 80. Must stay straight on the first dart. He does just sit on top of that. Tops the lead for the first time. 40. They both bend the wind. The way he walked to the Ryan hockey there, Scott. He, thinks, he thought that was in. Yeah, it was close enough to be. It's a massive the deflection flare. there, but Ryan Harrington. Good adjustment with the last. Now break a throw for Harrington. He will now sixth flag. Ryan to throw first throw for the match. Game on. Marco throws in the background from Haruki. The end of that leg. 85. No emotion when he goes into the 85. fire there. Well, that travels a bit of a saviour. Just mid 70s to late 70s is enough here for Ryan Harrington right now. I don't think it'll be 51. enough to be lifting the trophy on Saturday night. It's just one of those games where it's just all about the two points. Could be a long night for Haruki if he happens to lose this game. 59. Yeah, we've got the old adage of, you know, I'll be losing two on the bounce. 100. Group B, because the game soon get away from you. It's a totally different sort of scenario, the Group B, to any others. That three from five is great, but you're open up with two losses. 60. Joe Mernon, who's sitting really pretty at the moment. And Ryan Harrington joined him. And with darts like the first one, he will. He needs to think again here. 97. Again, he needs to think here. And going for the 19 wasn't the shot in the end. He could have just took a second to. 
125. Six starts and 168 for Harrington for victory. Perfect first. 88 left. There's the option of staying there at treble 16. What a beautiful dart that is. That is the best throw of this match so far. Ninety-six. Nothing Muramata can do. Ryan requires forty. It's all in the hands of Ryan Harrington. He's got one win under his belt already. Can he make it two out of two? Thirty. Not to be on this visit, Glenn. Haruki requires seventy-six. So Haruki has another chance. Get back into the match. Has to be straight here with the first one. Well, he goes twenty double eighteen. We've seen him do that. Harrington shaking his head in the background. And on the inside wire of 18. Ryan requires 10. Harrington comes back at 10. He'll be going straight for it, surely. There's the marker. And Game there's the execution. Shot. Ryan Harrington does get over the line. Harrington. Ryan Harrington does have two wins out of two. Both he and Joel Mernon have made the perfect start. It's been a very disappointing night so far for Haruki Muramatsu. Plenty of work on the practice board. You feel uh, nothing to write home. That 1-1-1 one, one, one finish being the real highlight for Ryan Harrington. But all he'll care right now is the four points. As next up, it's Carl Sneed against Harry Gregory. Welcome back to the Live Lounge in Portsmouth for the Moda Super Series Group B action where four games have been played, but only two players have amassed points, Joe Mernon and Ryan Harrington, sharing the eight points that have been on offer so far between them. But that will change here as Carl Sneed and Harry Gregory go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the pair's second games of the night. Sneed went down 4-1 to Harrington. Gregory didn't manage to win a leg against Joe Mernon, but one of them will put themselves into third place on two points. And, of course, three go through from this group. This will be the quarter stage 
of the group completed after this one. So a good place to be in going into the rest of the evening. And again tomorrow, Glenn Durrant and Scott Mitchell will be talking first. you through all of the action. Game on. Yeah, thanks, Murph. And as you rightly say, one of these two guys has got to get two points from this one. No matter what, one of them will get it. And jump 57. into third place in the table. Oh, well, Sned does actually own that at the minute, but 96. Without a win on the board, just through the fact that he's lost. His leg difference is a little better than Harry Gregory's. 100. Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed in Harry's first game. Some of the averages posted very, very recently beat Shane McGurk, who's a regular here at the Motor Service. He's a top player in himself. The 97 average. Just losing out to Adam Hunt that day. Brother wins over Nathan Gervin with a 90 plus. Over Greg Ritchie with a 95 plus. Harry Gregory B. Fallon Sherrick as well with a 90. So he's actually in decent nick at the moment, Harry Gregory. He just didn't perform in that game against Joe Mernon. So an interesting game for Harry to see how he plays. He may have come across Carl Sneed in the ADC events that he's played. 60. But it's time for him to stand tall and produce his best. Yeah, to be fair, Joe kept him under pressure in his first game. 95. No room to be Carl able to throw with freedom. We saw some good visits from him, but not strung together. One hundred and twenty-eight. Nice setup Harry requires one hundred and twelve. Just has the option of treble eighteen there, but did try to sneak it in the treble. Eighty-eight. Let's set up play from both. Requires sixteen. Much better start from both players in this leg. Game shot in the first leg. It's the best leg of the Carl night for Sneed. Carl Sneed so far. Again, he just looked a little bit laboured. Against Ryan Harry in his first game, so I think he's gone back and given himself a bit of a Second telling leg. off. Second leg, Harry to throw first. Game on. Good start from Harry Gregory, despite so he's beginning to find his range. Ninety nine. He sure is. Prop from Dart for Sneed. That one just under the wire. 59. His darts kick up a little. Just. Enough to cause hindrance. The other dart travelling towards the treble 20. One hundred. Ninety-nine. Yeah, just a Big increase in pace in this game, and he is a, a fan watching. It's just more pleasing on the eye, 60. isn't it? Sixty-four. And a good little move, Gregory there to lead the one forty. 58. Harry requires 140. 140. That is the modern way to go now, Scott, in the 140, isn't it? Started by a rub cross, of course. Very, very impressive here from Harry Gregory. Might be 1-0 down at the moment, but he's averaging 97. Nothing coming back from Carl Sneed 44. here. 44. Harry requires 8. Surely for 1-1. One, one. Game shot on the second leg. Harry Gregory. Yeah, that will settle him a little. And there's the averages we were... Third leg. Miracle about his 90 averages first. recently. Game on. And he's on one now, 94. And a smidge. That's the who's who's that he's beaten in the past sort of six months. He Wesley Plazier as well at the Challenge Tour. In October last year, so some good good stuff when you're looking at Harry's form. Ninety-three. 
100. Fifty eight. Yeah, good thinking there by Harry Gregory. And t tell you what, Scott, to top off everything regarding all these good averages that he's had in the past few months, he's actually qualified for Minehead as well through the Wiley's qualifiers. So, see him on the outside of the pack. 60. If you look at where his game was at, I mean, the bookies, like I say, aren't often wrong. And that first opening game against Joe Mernon, you could understand why he was the outsider. But right at this moment... Just beginning to find his range against this tough left-hander in Carl Sneed. 44. 100. Went with the dart there on the last one. Put everything into it. 59. Well, Harry Gregory and Carl Steve will realise that Haruki Maramatsu is really out of form at the moment, so good to be thinking, is it three out of four to qualify? So 40. this game just gives it added impetus. Carl requires 119. It sure does. And again, big numbers being 43. missed here. Harry requires 150. 74 left. Double 10. That's a beautiful setup. Carl, Carl Sneed will think 76. he's going to get at least one dart or a double. Must stay straight in the first dart. A beautiful first dart. Got a dart at the top. So he has to take this and Game get it. Carl Sneed. Carl Sneed. A disappointing start to the night, remember. But you can see he's fighting. You can see he's trying to G himself up because Harry Gregory's just beginning Four to flag. find his Harry range, as he can first. see. Game on. Very much all to play for between the pair of them. 41. There is an... Not bad place. Nice little financial 59. bonus. 59. Into the Saturday night. We're trying to have a look at the, the darts that he's using there. One hundred. Perfect timing, cameraman. Hey, big well done to our production team. They know their stuff. Fifty-eight. We have a man of the match at the end of the night, and. Uh, One hundred and twenty-eight. This is warming up all of a sudden. Put the side angle back on, please. Sixty-two. Carl requires one hundred and thirty-four. So fifty-six left for Sneed. He's ahead for the sixteens, and he's missed the big number. Eighty-five. Yeah, he's not one Harry normally for missing big numbers. It just looks like he needs some energy inside of Carl Sneed right now. In a fantastic position here against a much improved Harry Gregory. Carl requires big moments for Sneed here. This is for a break of throw, remember? A 3 1 lead. So, double top. And we're going underneath this a little bit yesterday, and it's a very similar way to that because he likes double 10. 29. The tens desert him. Harry requires 60. Yeah, he's normally deadly on that double 10, as we've seen all week. Harry Gregory got away with one here. Can he see it out? Interesting 50. with that double 10, Scott. He stayed on that right hand side of Carl the hockey there instead of moving 20. back into the middle. Game shot on the yeah, fourth No leg. second invitation Cold needed Sneed. from Sneed. Takes a 3-1 lead and now has the throw. Fifth leg. Cole to throw first. Game on. Ooh. 
137. And then with the momentum of winning that leg, drops in. With a 137. 59. Good moments again here for Sneed. And he just seemed to be lacking a little bit of energy. All of a sudden, seems rejuvenated right now. Forty-two. Gregory, way, way back this time around. One hundred and twenty-one. See the anguish on his face there, but he's put himself in a magnificent position for his first two points in his Group B campaign. Ninety. Call requires one hundred and forty. Start as evening. Fifty-seven. Sixty. Yeah, it's a shame for Harry Cole Gregory. Eighty-six. And for Carl Sneed, the first real positivity of the night. He started off really poorly. He had good moments in this match, and you now see it. How he doesn't need to mess about too much. 61, that's a dangerous way to go, but 50. he's got it. He's got the big 25 there. He will be back. Yeah, those shots were always difficult. Bobby George would always say that when you're going for that 25, you can't actually aim for 25. You're aiming 56. for the ball, so if you do hit the ball, it can mess your Call shot. requires 36. But he got the 25, and it's double 18 for the match. And the Game first two shot. points for Carl Sneed. Cold He's had a funny all night so far, but he'd be happy with that victory there against the improved Harry Gregory. I think if I was in the shoes of Harry Gregory, I'd be thinking he knows there's more to come. He isn't seeing too much coming from the players. But Carl Sneed, he just pats himself on there for job well done. As we look at the tail of the tip, the checkout ratio for Carl Sneed being a big success. First two points. As next up, it's Joe Mernon against Ryan Harrit in the battle of the unbeaten players.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, or welcome if you are just joining us. I've been somewhere else watching some other That's Why did you want to do that? Well, we can recap what's happened so far with a former Premier League champion in Glenn Durant. Here are the results from this evening, Glenn. Um, look, there's a couple of players that have won both their games. What's really stood out for you, though? Uh, just the fact that Joel Mernon's won a couple of games. His opening three darts of the night were very, very ropey. He was very nervous. But once he got settled in, because Haruki Muramatsu was the favourite going into this group B, and it was a really poor start from him. And Joe Mernon just got on top. He had the confidence, and you know, with doubles like that as well. I mean, that was a tricky first two darts there, and you could just see he felt a two foot tall lead with the victory there, and it was a pretty straightforward win over Harry Gregg in his second match. Yeah, really good stuff from Joe Mernon, who was stood in here, wasn't he, earlier on, saying he didn't know what yeah. to expect from himself, but it's been. Pretty impressive. I, and I believed him as well. I, I, I could sort of understand where he's going. And even partly me was thinking, even if he is feeling well, so he hasn't won it, you know, he hasn't been winning games regular. And honestly, you seem to forget how to win. You can put yourself in a position, something very similar I had in the seniors when I was playing Jim McEwen. And I was just thinking to Joe, just keep pushing because nothing was coming from Muramatsu and really got away with that one in a sense that Muramatsu wasn't at the races and he's kicked on since then. The short format does that help with that of course when he was on the Pro Tour he'd have another two legs to get to that yeah, winning line Yeah he won't be used to that but he'd be used to playing ADC, he'd be used to playing Super League as well so I didn't put that one as a factor but I think if you went in the players area now he'd be one very happy man as will Ryan Harrington of course who's also won both of his games so far, made the final Last time he was here, and he's played some dominant darts again. Yeah, this 96 finish was a real highlight, a beautiful second dart. And Carl Sneed was just getting into the game at that point. He's very dogged, is Ryan Harrington. And this was his highest finish, the 111. This double 16 was sweet as a nut against, a, I, say, I have to say it again, a very disappointing Muramatsu. A question that probably always gets asked about Ryan Harrington as well. How much pressure does it add having such a famous darting dad? I know you've got a, yeah. a nephew, in fact, quite a few family members that are playing the game now trying to live up to that Durant name. Yeah, yeah, and I speak to, obviously, Jamie more than anybody as well, so he must get fed up of hearing regarding Rod. He's, he's, he's built his own career. He's very dogged, he's very determined, and very much of a... If he gets into, like, a 2-2 game, you fancy Ryan for a real scrappy win. What I've yet to really see from Ryan, and I had a good look at his numbers from Q School, and a, it was a disappointing Q School, and not the greatest challenge to her as well, is that he hasn't really produced his A game for a long time, and I just think it's OK getting to, uh, to Saturday night as well, but I think the next thing for him is to win it. I would just love to see him post a really big average and shows his A game. So, uh, but he's put himself in a magnificent position and a huge game coming up next for him. Yeah, he absolutely has. It is the two former two card holders that are topping the table after the first couple of games for each player. Mern and Top on by leg difference. Harrington not too far behind by that metric either. Uh, they are going to play next, so we're going to see which one of them. Um, stays unbeaten, but are we already thinking that it's going to be those two and then one from the other three? What I would say is I think the winner of the next game will qualify because I think they'll really kick into the final game as well. And I think they'll be looking at the, the league table. They know they're playing each other. And uh, yeah, I think the winner of the next game has one foot in for qualification. Right, five more matches to come tonight, but only one more week after this week to qualify for Champions Week. And we can now reveal the full lineup for the final week of qualifying. And we've got some big names coming in. Ted Everts lost his tour card, didn't get through Q-School. He's going to make his debut at the Super Series in Group A. Ross Montgomery, likewise, and then in Group C, John O'Shea and Bradley Brooks. That looks very, very strong. Well, And, and honestly, uh, for people watching right now, it's the first time I've seen it, and that Group A looks yeah, sensational. We're good friends in the same management team as Ted Everts. I knew he was playing sort of next week. Sebastian Wiewetzki is uh, someone I'm a big fan of. Scott Taylor knows how to do it. Fantastic to see Rump, Ross Montgomery here. That's going to be really exciting. But of all them big names, John O'Shea, Bradley Brooks, do you know the one name that's standing out for me there? Neil Mania from Cornwall. He is a very, very tidy player and someone I've always wondered what he's been doing with his game. He doesn't often lose games when I've watched him at County over the years. So that is a brilliant week. The other name that stood out for me? Steve Hine, the muffin man, yeah. of course, because he brings muffins with him everywhere he goes. Hopefully he can dish some out to the production crew. Too many not. sins for you, but I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, next I'll week, be okay. No. Oh, good. Thank God for that. Steve, bring some healthy muffins next week with you. Um, let's see who can serve up a good performance here then in the next game. Uh, look, you say whoever wins this one yeah. will go through. 
who is going to win it? I just think the momentum's there. Joe Mernon's looking good. Ryan Harrington. So it's either a big win for Joe, uh, Joe Mernon or if it goes tight, Ryan Harrington will get over the line. It's one of those groups. I don't often sit on the fence, but it's just that it's one of them groups just like that. May the best player win. Let's see if Scott Mitchell can give us a better answer. He's in commentary. Glenn's going to go and join him. I'd love to give you a better answer, Murph, but uh, I have it down pretty much the way that Glenn sees it. It's one of those that, you know, the the winner of this game will definitely have a leg up of going through and six points from three games would, it would be an absolute disaster if they didn't qualify from here who, win is, who wins this game and I think they will both know that, but I don't think either will be overly concerned if they don't win it, because obviously they're not going to be out of it anyway. So it's a big step up for whoever does, but the reality is they're both first still man, very much Jota in the mix first. after this game. Game on. Yeah, for sure with the game of the night so far. Yeah, the two unbeaten players that we mentioned, and I've really struggled to answer 140. Just Murphy's questions in a sense that it's just one of those groups. I just... It's just difficult to give predictions on and been proven that way. But for sure, the game of the night has started beautifully well. Forty-five. Yeah, we're seeing in the reflection there with with the chats there. I've yet to see the real A game from Ryan Harrington for a long time. I did ask for a, a hundred average 96. in this game from him. And they deliver. I just feel like the whole momentum Scott will be with the winner of this match. They'll go back three out of three, six points. It's a real bonus going into their final game. And Ryan Harrington will fancy his chances against Harry Gregory, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And one hundred and twenty one. And it is with the six points, with there only being four games. Tonight and four tomorrow. One of those guys jumps up onto six points with Ryan five games to go. You can limp over the line from there. I think a guide here is in group B is four wins. Joe requires 82. And a plus leg difference is what you're chasing here. And that is generally there and thereabouts to get you through in third place. So double five for Mernon. Shot on the first leg. You Joe have Mernon. to say that was really a clean kill there, Scott. Yeah, very clean. Second leg, Ryan to throw first. Nobody misses five, they say. On that occasion, Mernon didn't. Yeah, nice start from both. Both. Course very, very early in here, but both scoring fantastically well. A beautiful 15 dart to hold a throw for Joe Mernon. So, lots of positives and good things to see. And they seem to be bringing the best out of each 100. other. This group B's really failed to spark. Saw some good moments in that previous game. The two headline acts, they're putting on a real show so far. They are indeed. Another 180 goes Harrington's way. Forty-seven. Well, when I asked for the A game of Ryan Harrington, didn't think I was going to get the A plus game. Ninety-five. One hundred. See the determination in the face there from Joe Man. Come on, he says to himself. Very much in the hands. Doesn't need to stay on the 18's bed. So 68 left. 46. 134. Ryan 15 requires 15 dart hold the throw, Scott, for... Joe Mern in the first Game leg, a 13 the dart leg. hold to throw up for Ryan, Ryan Harrington. Harrington. We asked for a real show from these two, and they're delivering so far. Yeah, they sure are, and 
Third leg, Joe to throw first. Game on. So with this two 180s, just why he's pipping the averages, but that was a very assured holder throw with 13 darts there. And these two guys on the tour card holders are just letting go here. They're throwing with freedom. 85. Long may that continue because very entertaining to watch. Forty-eight. Eighty-one. A good sign that you're playing well when even an eighty-one you don't feels enough. Ryan Harrington will have to break Joe Mernon to win this Seven. match. And with darts like that from Joe, a real opening now for Ryan. It just makes the job slightly easier, doesn't it? And now Harrington punishing this for another 180. His third of the match. Fourth of the evening. Yeah, they have played 46. each other four times previously, Ryan going all the way back to a European two were qualifying. It's 3 1 to Joe Mernon in those four games. One in the Players' Championship as well. The final game was in last 96. time the play was in 2021 at Q School. And again, Joe Mernon won that one. So they've had previous. 100. Ryan requires 59. That's 3 180 so far from Ryan. A real determination and focus. Just takes his time, checks the score of his opponent. Thought that was in. He was walking. Game shot. That one is in. Leg. He can walk Ryan on now. Harrington. Break a throw from Harrington there. That 10853 for Harrington. Leg. Ryan to throw first. Game on. Joe gives himself a little G up there. Come on. Literally less than five minutes ago. 30. Yet to see the A game from Ryan Harrington for, for a while. He knows that win on that stage. He's spoken an awful lot of positivity about when the games are getting tight. You feel like he's going to win. A pair of them are bringing the best out of each other. I think the referee, A.D. Mason, is really enjoying this. 100. Sixty. Perfect dart for Harrington to slide in off of. Two perfect darts. Fifty-five. But you have to hit them. Yeah, the, for the first time, the average has gone under a hundred there for Ryan. We just want to get himself and compose because Joe Mernon, after recent, after being broken in the previous 100. leg. Smashed in a couple of 180s in this one. Five 180s in this match already after only three legs. We're in the fourth, of course. 60. Joe Standard, requires the only, 81. Uh, four darts at a double for the pair of them, and three doubles have been hit. So Game stuff on the outer the ring has been superb. As Joe Mernon. Joe Mernon shows once again, and there we go. What checkout stats they are. Fifth leg, Joe to throw first. Game on. Bringing the best out of each other. Just felt this group B was just a real slow burner. 140. These two are setting now a real benchmark for the rest to follow. And they're bringing the best out of each other, as we've said. This is fantastic to watch. 120. That would have been the sixth maximum. I think if it was stayed in, it would have been 125. I think that bounced out of the five section. It hit the flight. Headed left. And then 61. bounced out of the five, but... 100. Harrington would have felt that it was going in the treble, that's for sure. 100. Just a beautiful last start there from Ryan. His concentration levels are... One of his greatest assets. 
Phil Murner is best as a very much of a flair player, very much of a rhythm player. 125. Despite all his troubles, he's beginning to look good tonight. This would be just good for the confidence if he can pop in a little 100 plus average. I've only seen that really peppered by Chris Gilliland 60. this week. Forty-five. So that's it for Harrington. Is it a forty-five of Mernon to try and just bridge the gap a little? Sixty. And he couldn't have got any closer to doing that if he tried, but he still leaves a one-six-one. Both exaggerate, uh, ex averaging exactly the same. 69. Ryan the problem requires we'll go with the bullseye on 65. You're prone to hit a single number. Level 17. 84 can go back for trouble. 20. And he, he really does Jeremy now pressure that 61 of Vernon. Wants to be really careful. He hits 13 left. Just needs to take his time. Big five would be the sensible dart, but. Your mind can do funny things when you're up there, but he's got himself together. No score. Chance Ryan for Harrington. requires 24. Big, big chance. 24. Game and he takes it as well. Leg. Ryan Harrington. Sixth leg. Ryan to throw first. Game on. Still doing a 90, even though that was a bit of a bust back score before, which he effectively scored zero. 85. I wonder if Ryan Harrington heard the interview when I said we're yet to see a, a real A game from him because this has been sublime. 60. He's done all the hard work now. Can he see the game out? Fifty-eight. Chance here for Joe to catch up, but he needs trebles to catch. Forty. Yeah, it's all very similar darts, aren't they? I'd say the old-fashioned straight barrel. I didn't know any different. I would say they were mine. Fifty-nine. In what year? <laughs> I was going to say the same. A winning one. <laughs> if you had to give them away, you could probably go back and get those back out. 60. Can you have those for the red and white? Uh... Rich, Richard Ashdown sent me them back. I gave them them when I beat Mark McGee, he sent them back, and unfortunately, I can't throw them either. 40. But it's not about me right now, it's about these two who are putting on a fantastic show for us. 60. Now, most people would be disappointed to see 159, but when your opponent's on 281, you take the nine off. Will he go back upstairs? Because that first one wasn't ideal. He could use the centre of the board. 59. That was sort of a bit of a hit and hope. His to lose some here, though. Yeah, absolutely agree, Glenn. 100. Six Ryan from here from Harrington 100. on the 100, but he'll hope it's only two. Been a tremendous display from Ryan Harrington and Game. a tremendous Shot. finish to and boot as well. A Ryan very, Harrington. very solid performance. We asked for an A game from Ryan Harrington. I think he must have heard the conversation because that is the best version of Ryan Harrington for a long time. It's three wins out of three for Ryan. He was averaging well over 100 for the majority, averaged over 95, four from five in the outer ring, and a beautiful way to finish. That's the way to do it. As next up, it's the return of Haruki Muramatsu against Carl Sneed.
Game 7 of tonight's 10 here at the Super Series features Japan's Haruki Muramatsu and the ADC qualifier Carl Sneed. Both had good campaigns in Group A, but who will get the better of the other in Group B? Let's find out with Scott Mitchell and Glenn Durant. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. It's been a pretty horrific night for Haruki Muramatsu. And when I stood on the stage to preview Group B, the man retrieving his darts right now was the favourite to win Group B, and it just hasn't gone his way at all tonight. He needs to find something. He's playing Carl Sneed. He'll know exactly his game. It'll be their fourth time they've played each other this week as well. Carl Sneed, his opening game, flattered to deceive, but he really found some form in a really enjoyable game against young Harry Gregory. But you'd have to fancy the bomber to win this match. Left-hander from Lancashire, from Oldham. So probably will know Joe Mernon and Harry Gregory well. But for Haruki, he Haruki needs something to, to happen. First. You can't look for Game qualification on. if you're going to have three losses on the spin. Haruki will fancy his chances in the final game of the night against Harry Gregory. 140. One hundred and forty. Nice one forty there from Sneed. Go straight back at one hundred. There are Matsu. One hundred and twenty three. One hundred. Fifty-eight. Haruki requires one hundred and sixty-one. That was Haruki won the first two days. Monday, Tuesday against Carl. Carl did get a little bit of revenge yesterday. Sixty-five. There hasn't been an awful lot to separate these two so far this week. Much better start for Muramatsu in this match. Arsene can still lay up nicely. 60. Haruki that's going to be enough. 96. This type of finish, Scott, you feel needs to start to happen for Haruki. Yeah, agreed. And 88. Now he's in here. Cole he's requires to change his stem again. Going back to what he was using yesterday. For the Shanghai, one hundred for a, an early lead. Haruki requires eight. Game shot in the first leg. Yeah, nicely done. Haruki Muramatsu. Yeah, change of flight and stem system for Muramatsu. For this one, to what he Second had in leg. his Call to throw first. opening couple of games. But that's not unusual for him. He's done that once or twice this week already. During Group A, fifty-eight. One hundred. Sixteen dart holder throw for Muramatsu. Sixty. Yeah, Carl Sneed's put himself in decent positions this week. It just seems to fall at the final fence, and I want to learn from that. He's got himself in a decent 45. position now. Victory here in this game. Puts him joint second with Joe Mernon. Remember, three do qualify. In the... 60. Would be that four-point gap to the two non-qualifiers. So a big game for Carl Sneed here. And Sally's probably think it's typical that Haruki's just beginning to find some form against me. Yeah, you can feel like that up there, I have to say. On my occasions, I've... I think sometimes being a commentator here and then going up and playing, it can... Uh, 
can play with the mind a bit because we see all the scenarios in here and then you start going out there and being in the practice room and playing and you start thinking those scenarios and the flashbacks of what 16. you've seen in here. These are the two favourites before a dart was thrown. Well, maybe a surprise second favourite, but that's credit to the way he's performed 43. on this stage here. But like I said, my only fear for Carl Sainz, I don't doubt his ability is dart and prowess. He just gets himself in good positions and then fails to see it out. And that word expectation, I was expected 95. to win this game the way it's gone so far tonight. But eventually you stop not seeing them out because you get fed up with not seeing them out and, and you give yourself a good talking to and 140 <laughs> that was awfully close to catching a flight and, and busting that I was thinking the same I was thinking of doing that Andy Hamilton can still finish with treble 20 27 Carl requires 40 Game on the second leg. Carl Sneed. Yeah, nicely done. Third leg. Haruki to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. Back on throw on his own throw. He's now starting to hit the trebles again. Yep, that was first leg with 140 ton ton and be looking to do more of 22. that. 22. Particularly now that Sneed has gone 22. Yeah, they look tired darts, didn't they, from Carl? He wants to put that extra bounce on his step. Just let your opponent know you're feeling mighty fine. Remember the pair of them. 140. Started at 9.30 on Monday morning. The sense is getting to the real conclusion, the real nitty gritty of the week. When you, when you really step up to be at your best. It's gone with throw so far, this game. 140. From absolutely nowhere, Scott. Ton 40, ton 40, ton 40. Absolutely nowhere indeed. Need will... 80. Haruki requires You're thinking, 81. thank goodness, this is on your own throw, pal. Don't fancy doing that to me. Tops it is for a 12-dart leg. Game and tops it is for a 12-dart leg. leg. Haruki Muramatsu. Yeah, maybe that previous game has sparked Haruki Fourth into to some sort first. of form. Game However, on. this match is still only on throw. They both seem to be winning their throws quite comfortably. Forty-three that were just flashed up there. Shows that Haruki Muratsu is good for the two-one lead. I actually thought it'd be really inspired 99. after the performance of Makuru Suzuki today. I thought is that one of the reasons why maybe Haruki will just use that as his motivation tonight. One hundred. Like I said, it's not over, but it's a tough qualification when you lose your first opening two games. His final game, he will fancy. We'll end the night against Harry Gregory, so he could finish okay with two wins out of four, 82. Scott. Yeah, he could do. And, and then it, you ask yourself the question, how would Suzuki have gone if she could have clawed her way into this Group B? She had a slow start on 100. Monday without winning the game, and she she had three, four threes in that period. If, if one or two of those gone the other way, she could have been in this Group B, and what she was producing this afternoon would have, I think, been good enough to get through here as, as in the top three. Yeah, fair point, Scott. Fair point. Not to sure where she'll be sleeping 58. too well tonight, thinking those last three darts to, to end the day on eight points. But yeah, it was a brilliant group C today. For me, the session of the week so far. Yeah, I said to Murph in the closing part of the show this afternoon that... Well, I felt that she would go away and just be thinking of those three darts when she did so much good for the whole of the afternoon. To finish on those, it's, it's um, Haruki requires for dart Haruki. players. We think a little bit negatively at times, particularly when we haven't got a dart in our hand and Game, John, the, the day is player. over. Haruki Muramatsu. More negative thoughts on Haruki Muramatsu because this performance, I have to say, has come from 
absolute nowhere. Just shy of 100 Midway, average in his opening game. He averaged 80. Game on. Look, I don't like to be too critical of players, but he, he was really, really poor in that game. And in the second one, average just 78 against Ryan. 85. And at this moment, he's just shy of 100 average. And, it, and we're not being unfair to say he didn't compete in either game. That That's the fact of the matter. 57. Again, like we say he... Yeah, there is that same scenario where you start, it's how you finish. And like I said, he could go back to the hotel with two wins out of four. And I thought that what you're worried about, I put myself in a good 100. position. Remember, 10, 10 points is the promised land in this uh, Group B campaign. But Ryan Harrington is a game away. He's up next against Harry Gregory. He can go away very, very happy in oh, half an hour's time. I have a funny feeling that Haruki is going to be continuing to use this setup for the rest of the evening. 100. Yes, I've been seeing people change darts, flight stem combos throughout the week. A big believer, it's about you, yourself, and well, that's maybe for another day. 140 here for Muramatsu. You can see that winning line. 45. I have to say, we've had a week of very, very close games. So many 4 threes. Whereas tonight, it's been pretty much one way traffic towards the winner. But these two were in that group here, which just had battle after battle. So he's put himself in a good position for this match. Carl requires 86. Pressure applied indeed to Sneed. Double seven incoming, yeah, and he Jonathan hits it. Flag. What Carl a big Sneed. 86 that was, because Aramatsu sat there after 12, which Sick is not flag. too shabby. To throw first. Game on. On double top, and... He takes that out in 15 darts and just goes to show, like we were saying earlier, you can throw the kitchen sink at somebody. If they're on throw and they get out in 15, 59. you've got to throw big sinks around. Yeah, the finishing tonight has been a real highlight. Once again, another match where the finishing has been superb. 140. The 95 average from Ryan Harrington 100. in that special performance being the highest average of the night. But Muramatsu this moment is, like I say, just shy of 100. 140. Muramatsu here. Another back-to-back -back 140s. Is it more 140s than tons in this match 97. so far? 15 is a special number. He didn't hit many 180s in the Group A campaign compared to a lot of the other players. That's the only thing that's not been done in this match so far. 140. Right on cue, another. That is ninth 140 in this game. He's only thrown seven tons, but the other stat to go with that is three from four on his doubles as well. 134. Haruki requires 81. Double 12. Performance Eight. of the night. Shots. Haruki Muramatsu. Haruki Where have Muramatsu. you been in his opening two games? He was very, very disappointed. And Carl Sneed is just looking to him. Where on earth has that performance come from, Haruki? And that really does tighten up this group B campaign. Look at those numbers, Haruki. 102.07. Sensationally on the outer ring. And a beautiful way to finish. Finally, he joins the party. It's top of the table, Ryan Harrett next. He plays Harry Gregory.
Well, we saw the performance of the night here at the Modus Super Series before the break from Haruki Muramatsu, a three-figure average, a couple of 81 checkouts in there as well. Really good stuff from the Japanese player, but the player of the night has to be Ryan Harrington. He's won all three of his matches so far. The opposite for Harry Gregory, who's played two, lost two, and is hoping to somehow pick up some points before the end of the evening. But fixtures against Muramatsu and this one against Harrington do not bode well for the youngster. Now, can Harrington go through the card and make it a perfect night, a perfect start to Group B? We'll find out. If he wins this, he will be top unbeaten and on eight points. And talking First through way, the action, Ryan it's Glenn first. and Scott. Game on. Many thanks, Murph. Yes, so a fantabulous Ryan Harrington. 64. In his last game, when he played Joe Mernon. And we saw a brilliant Haruki. 59. Maratsu in the last game. So the guy's really coming to the party now. And I know Ryan Harrington will be a big favourite for this game. But how many times we had this scenario a couple of times this week where it's top versus bottom. I've seen enough positives from Harry Gregory in his previous game. 58. Well, he can challenge Ryan Harrington here. Yeah, before a dart was thrown, if you'd looked at the numbers of what they've been posting recently, you'd actually fancy Harry Gregory, but Ryan Harrington has been superb. And I thought 43. his performance against Joe Mernon was just sensational. I really did. I thought he really stepped up in the, the type of performance he really needs on Saturday night 100. if he qualifies, which he's got one foot there already. He's a, a game away here from four out of four. Yeah. 96. So in. No sleep as well off the back of that, I would imagine. Come in and said, job done. I, I speak to him earlier and he said he'd swapped darts just last night for Super League and they went really well. And he said they're a slightly different diameter than the ones that he's been using for the last couple of years. And these are his originals that he 58. used to use and they felt comfortable. So he brought them here today on a bit of a whim and got to say, He's ground 60. his way to a couple of Ryan wins in the first one, but he was very dominating in his last win. Forty-five. Harry requires one hundred and twenty-four. Well, Treble eighteen. The shot. That's a beautiful 92. last two. Ryan requires one hundred and two. But the way Ryan Harrington's has been playing tonight, doubly 11, I think that will be. Yes, it is. Double checking with the referee there. And when things Game are going your the way, them sort Ryan of things happen. Harrington. I pretty much wrote my conclusions. The double 10 went in on a different day. That could Second have gone leg. all Harrington so wrong. Throw first. Game on. Sixty. Fifty-five. No more time. Time is sort of running out for Harry Gregory at the moment. No doubt he's super excited to be here. He's had a... Ninety-two. Fantastic few months. I suppose the cherry on the cake was the qualification for the UK Open. It hasn't gone well so far, but you could have said the same for Haruki Muramatsu, who's put himself in a position for qualification now with just one good game. 85. Yeah, did well there and composed himself and stopped for a split second and got himself back into it. 100. 
60. Just a sign of a little bit of frustration there from the young man. Forty. A bit of dart on dart fallout there. Nothing to do with the board. The pace of the last dart was taken off by hitting the second dart. And there was just no full forward propulsion for it 95. to get enough grip into the size or to hang in there. Fifty-nine. Yeah, Harry requires here 109. From Ryan Harrington. From that sensational virtual over a hundred average for the majority of the game. He's forty-three. Forty points down on that. Sixty. Harry requires sixty-six. The bullseye or treble ten. Forty-six. Ryan requires one hundred and sixty-four. Not to be this time for Harrington. Eighty-five left. Yeah, nicely done. Twenty-four. Pressure Harry applied. Requires twenty. Yeah, pressure on someone who's only won one leg today. Remember. Things can go wrong when these things happen. A little shake of the head there. 15. And that was a worry for me Ryan when he's shaking his head after the 40. second dart. We're still having one in his hand. Game show on the second leg. Ryan Harrington. Dick Turpin had a mask, I believe. <laughs> yeah, tough times now for Harry. Just messing about Third with his leg. equipment Ryan there, thinking. First. Game Why has on. it all gone wrong? And a real big knife for me and for Ryan Harrington. You, know, you win legs like that when you've won three out of three. If Ryan Haddon was sat there on three losses, you don't get them opportunities. That's just darts. 100. Yeah, it is just darts. But at the time, you don't think it. You don't think it for another 25 minutes afterwards. So 100. I want to see the boy bounce back here, Gregory, because he's got to start thinking, well, that, that, that was mine. I was playing well enough. That was mine. One hundred and eight. Clearly, see what it's what it's done to Ryan Harrington. He was labouring. He was on an average, which we haven't seen from him tonight. And sixty. He is two from two on the outer ring. It just seems to have sparked him from somewhere. Ton one eighty, followed by a one forty. One hundred and forty. Eighty one after nine, Scott. Yeah, five one eighty for Harrington on the evening. One hundred and forty. Ryan requires eighty-one. Remember, hit the eighteen minimum. Trebles the bonus. This is scrappy when he's got the the match in his hands. Really, twenty-five he has to forget about them quickly. As Ryan. 130. Ryan so now requires roll 56. reversal. Gregory applies the pressure. Harrington has the chance first. 16. Yeah, you could hear the kiss of the tongue and sometimes they go in. Sometimes it brushes up that tongue and goes into the double top. 54 points left. Double top. He needs this. Just Game his second the leg of the night. Harry Gregory. He needed that spark, didn't he? And could be the fact that Ryan Harrington messed about with the setup player. Failure on the double to get Fourth Harry leg. Gregory's Harry campaign going. First. Game on. What I like there, that Harry was absolutely positive that he was quite happy to rob one back to even 60. the robbing score of a one leg apiece. 100. Not a term that you like to, to hear because he's producing. That's his six one eighty the night. But he's just a scrapper, isn't he? He's just a fighter, and I think he enjoys these two one three two games where Ryan can just just see out a match. A lot of experience, even though he's still a very young lad, just in his thirties. Yeah, it's a good attribute to have because 
We know lots and lots that wants to get a couple of legs in front, belt off into the sunset and don't turn round and 43. look back. And Nice when you've got that scrapping ability. You have to have it to be a top player. Well, he's demonstrated that, that A game, the 95 plus average in the previous one. And he's just round about the 80 average here, which has been enough for him tonight. 58. One hundred and thirty six. I'll apologize to everyone right now, but just weird not seeing any four threes today because it's been a 59. week of incredibly close games. 72. Which means that the final three games no doubt will be four three now. He'll stay there. Tops for a three one lead. Game shot on the fourth leg. Ryan Clinical Harrington. once again. On the doubles. 5th leg, Ryan to throw first. He was 4 from 5 against Mernon in the big important game. Now oh, here he is. 3 from 5 in this one. 140. Yeah, it's been his key to the success as Ryan Harrington has demonstrated. He's got the big 180s in his armoury. Hitting doubles all of a sudden 100. now. 100. Now it's just that jigsaw putting everything together. Fifty nine. Some of the real highlights this week was to see Chris Gilliland as our first player through. One of the big favourites of the week, Justin Hood, sat on eight points. Resurgence of Reese Collins. One hundred and forty. I think the biggest statement to make is to go unbeaten in your campaign. And Ryan Harrington is not far from four wins out of four. And he can just sit back and watch the final two games 41. and get the cigar out. Yeah, what a, a big finals night we could be having Saturday night, looking at the players who are sat in the positions at 55. the minute. What a finals night experience there. And this, this guy, Ryan Harrington, knows how they work. He's had a semi-final. He's had a brilliant final as well. It was one of... 82. The best finals we've seen on the stage. Falling up short. 59. 59. Harry oh, requires just a Look over there for Harry Gregory Scott. Sixty-eight left. He's just taking his time, double checking with the referee. So may stay there following the second dart. Ninety-five. Ryan requires one hundred. I like that management. Went for an open target. But this is for the match, and this is for four wins out of four. Eighty. Harry requires fifty-two. Looks like he's going for. 20 for double 16. Game shot on the fifth leg. Harry Gregory. Nice save from Harry Gregory. Yeah, that's the beauty of this group B, isn't sixth it? Sixth leg. Just Harry a couple to of wins first. to finish off the day for Harry Gregory. Game on. Still very much all to play for in Group C and Group B. So please join us tomorrow. We're back here at 1 o'clock. On the Motor Super Series 56. YouTube channel. A fascinating group C, and this group B is just beginning to warm up nicely. This man has pole position at the moment. 96. 100. Positives for Harry Gregory. Ryan Harrington will want to get this match out the way ASAP. 60. Ryan will have the darts if it does go the distance. 43. Just that lateral drift there, you can just see Ryan Harrington. He can smell victory now. 
Can he get a couple of trebles in? With these three darts. Well, there's one of them. Advantage Harrington. He knew exactly what he needed to do there. Ninety-five. Next start from two or five. He may use the ball, but that's such a good marker. Totally understandable. Forty. Repaid. And a beautiful one forty. One hundred and thirty-three. Ryan requires sixty-five. Well, the pressure is he going to be nice and aggressive? Yes, he is. Then takes his time. There's the composure. Fifty-five. You should hear the anguish. Harry requires Chance for Gregory. seventy-four. Tops. Thirty-four. Ryan requires ten. Game. And he gets Jump. in the end. It's the perfect Harris. night for Ryan, Ryan Harrington. Harrington. Four wins out of four. He dips his toe into qualification. Almost certain from there. He puts his dart in his pocket and says, job well done. He goes up the stage. Harry Gregory, still an awful lot to do for him. He's seen some positives there. But Ryan Harrington, he's demonstrated his air game today. He's demonstrated his fighting qualities. And he goes unbeaten as we go to the penultimate game of Group B. It's Carl Sneed against Joe Mernon. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series, where I'm here with the man of the moment, Ryan Harrington. Four wins out of four. It couldn't have gone better tonight, could it? No, it really couldn't have gone better. Um, you know, I, I still think my game's a bit scrappy. I, I've, I've switched to my old darts as of last night. They're much more comfortable. I seem to be uh, doing the right things at the right time. I think that, that the important game was against Joe Mernin, both winning 2-2 two -two at that point. So um, to come out of this night, the first night, uh, four wins out of four, definitely puts my uh, mind at rest for tomorrow.
yeah, getting the job done in that last one against Harry Gregory as well. Um, and you, you've shown some fighting quality. You mentioned a little bit scrappy, but you've always been able to sort of put things right, haven't you? An example of that, that, that 102 checkout in that game. Yeah, the 102 was nice. Um, it kind of came out of nowhere a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, hitting double 10 and then thinking, well, double 11, not a nice double to go for, and then pinging it. It was, it was always nice, um, but that's where I'm gaining my confidence back. So that's good to see out of myself. And last time you were here, of course, got to the final, a thrilling final against um, Anton Ursland, went down 4-3 in that one. Did that give you a bit of motivation to come back here and cross the line this time? Uh, yes, of course, yes. Um, I always enjoy playing at the Modus. It's, it's such a, a, a great tournament to play. Um, and I think... My last time at Modus when I had a dart at top to so actually win the whole week and, and in my opinion I was nowhere near the best player of that week kind of said to me that just doing the right things at the right time can get you in places you didn't think you can get to. So again, you know, the, the, the four games that I've won, I don't think I've played great. I've just done the right things at the right time and I've got through them. So if I can just keep that mentality uh, and get my confidence up, then the right things at the right time will be a lot more uh, frequent. And it will win me a lot of games. Yeah, well, what it's done tonight is put you top of the table. We can show you that right now. That makes good reading, doesn't it? Look, we had a little chat off air before you came in. And I kind of said, look, it's pretty much job done in this group. But what will be the approach going into tomorrow? Um, I don't think job done is ever a situation until the day has ended. So uh, job done is is not the words that I'm going to be saying going, going back to the hotel tonight. I've got to wake up tomorrow and you know, try and have a good sleep at this time of the day or night, um, and and do the same thing. You know, come in here tomorrow and say I've still got to win four out of four. You know, regardless of what points I'm on now, just you know, a winner's attitude is win everything. So that's what I'm going to come in here tomorrow with. You've certainly done that tonight. Well done. We'll see you again tomorrow, and we're going to see Joe Mernon in action. He's trying to close the gap to a couple of points. He takes on Carl Sneed, and talking you through it are Scott Mitchell and Glenn Durant. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris and. Yeah, very refreshing, positive attitude and the kind of answer I'd give myself. You don't be worrying about the mathematical side situation when you've got eight points on the board there. So, yeah, just treat tomorrow exactly the same. But you have to feel that Ryan Harrington will be there on Saturday night, barring something absolutely crazy going on. But for Joe Mernon, I think going away with six points would be a real success for tonight. He did walk into a real steam train in, in the sense of when he played Ryan Harrington it was one of the performances of the week so far Joe Menon may have come across Carl Sneed very similar areas that northwest that real first hotbed Carl to throw first Carl Sneed having a, a decent on. night himself but this can all of a sudden make it a good night he can join Joe Menon on four points and plan his assault tomorrow so a very big game for both players 60 yeah, it sure is. I think Sneed has to jump in 60. here. And try and get himself a little gap. One hundred and forty. One hundred and eighty. And jumps in on his third one eighty of the evening. One hundred. Forty three. Yeah, how would you assess the night so far for Joe 60. Mernon? That man with the unknown as he walked onto the hockey tonight. I think he'd be fairly happy. Yeah, I think so. I think he felt 58. his game was in a pretty good place. And requires it's really only been a, a very informed Ryan Harrington that's turned him over so far this evening. 93. Carl Sneed, it's... Joe same old, same old, doesn't it? Gives himself opportunities. Just always seems to be the bridesmaid, but a big 
Still a big chance here for him. He's got total control of this 85. first leg. Carl requires I'm guessing these two guys must have played each other a fair bit. That's what I was thinking. There's nothing I can really find. Just been looking on the ADC site if they've crossed paths. 28. Joe requires 75. Starting the 17s. You'd be thinking, I didn't expect a chance in this leg. 63. Carl requires 20. Oh, Luck Sneed, he misses two at a double. He's not oh, often, often missed double 10, though, Scott. That's exactly what I was going to say. You don't want to leave Sneed on double 10. 10. Absolute Joe carnage there 12. at double 10, I think, with those tungstens. Game show on the well, the first night leg. started very slowly for Joe all Mernon. the players, barring Joe Mernon. The middle was some sensational stuff. Second just leg. That was Joe just a little bit first. sloppy for that man in your picture. Five missed darts, wasn't it? 60. You feel the top two if Joe Mernon wins this game are running away with things. Then it's a fight between one, between three. That final game. Muramatsu versus Gregory is massive. Look, particularly for Gregory, I mean, he's not out of it, is he? But, well, Muramatsu. 83. Up and do that 102. But he did. It's Carl Sneed. His last game, but I have to be honest, 59. when we've seen those ton averages over the week, Average after, it's been a far cry from it. Yeah, quite simply, if Joe Mernon wins this game and Harry Gregory wins the final game against Muramatsu, then it is all to play for, quite simply. Remember tomorrow to roll reverse of the games. This will be their first game tomorrow for the pair of them. It really is a classic four-pointer, and that's the kind of doubt that Sneed's been searching for. 41. I don't think there's plenty of meat in this game. Yeah, I agree 100% in that. 140. Another double session tomorrow, remember. Back here at 1 o'clock tomorrow for an enthralling group C. Really enjoyed what we witnessed today, the resurgence of Makuru Suzuki, but also 95. the big hitters. Carl really come to the fore 64. in Justin Hood and Reese Colley as well. So, 57 left for Sneed. 44. Joe requires 101. 101. Is it room 101 for Joe Mernon? Yes, Game it is. Game show the second leg. Joe Mernon. I think he enjoyed that one. No eye contact at all with Carl Sneed. No apology or nothing. Third Carl Sneed, penny for first. your thoughts right now because Game on. once again, when opportunity knocks, he's just not grasping it, Scott. No, he isn't. It's a little bit similar to what he did on the first day of Group A. Did end up with six points, but ninety-six could have been more. Just a little mention for next week's plays, Scott. The one that stood out for me was a. Uh, I know what you love your count. Nick, is it Mania? Is how you say his surname from Cornwall? Yeah, Neil Mania. Yeah, tremendous player, isn't he? Big lad like myself. He's, he's been a tremendous player for a 51. long time. Yeah, I, I was interested when I seen his name. Some real big hitters next week. But for some strange reason, Neil's name stood out. But he is in a very tough group in that group C. The, the strongest group C I've seen. Yeah, he's... Look, he'll relish that. He'll relish that. Is he's he still uh, playing good darts, is he? Yeah, he's... he's look, a lot of it, we, we talk about players having opportunities and this, that and the other with... With Neil, it's it's more location. Everywhere is a long 41. way from Cornwall. 
I mean, Cole everywhere. Requires 46. We'll have a little chat about that, Scott. I'll be keen to get your thoughts as Sneed looks at 46. 11 dart, you have to say, from nowhere. This has been his Achilles here. He's not from six on the outer 26. ring. Make that not from eight. Eighty-three. Carl requires twenty. Game, John. The Gets third himself leg. back in the game. He's dominating the statistics that we're looking at. But the the worst one is the one from nine on the outer ring, where Joe Merlin's been very, Fourth very leg. good on the doubles. The problem first. for Joe is getting game down on. to the doubles. But just going back to next week, Scott. Any names that stood out for you? Bradley Brooks, Ted Everts. Fre very fresh from sixty. It was it was one of those one of those groups where I think I've played most of them, um, whereas this one I haven't played many of them. So just thought, wow, what a group! You know, it just 43. popped out at you, and it's and it's week twelve, and and you look at it and think, well, this is going to be one of the hardest weeks to ever qualify from. I was that even thinking whoever gets 16. through it next week, one must be in good form, and two champions week the week after. Yeah, absolutely, but. I mean, we know how rough it is to play a full week here. So then, if you're up, then going back in with the averages is how it works on who goes in what yeah. group come Champions Week. Yeah, good shout, Scott. Never thought of that. 80. Oh, very much in the balance, this one. Joe's got the legs on the board. Beginning to find the treble when you need it. 100. Timing, timing, timing. 100. Joe requires 156. I just realised who Sneed's throw reminds me of now. We said we haven't seen the 156 this week, Scott. 120. You're absolutely right, and we still have yet to see it. Yeah, very reminiscent of Ron Moulin camp, the way he throws the dart, that left-hander. 94. It's advantage, Mernon. Joe requires 36. Game show on the fourth leg. Joe Mernon. I was hoping that was a break. I was dying to say Mernon has broken. Fifth leg. My favourite hit. first. Game on. Not to be. 78. Camp has a longer follow through, doesn't he? That goes back past his... Sort of below 90 degrees and gone sort of thing. But yeah, I can see where 100. you're coming from with that one. Yes, I played you in a final at Jersey, Scott, and I remember playing Ron Moulinkamp in my first one. One hundred Feeling of winning the Jersey Classics, the Jersey Opens, the, the Isle of Mans. I must admit I've got one eye on going to the British Open in September at Bridlington. I think I'll be going there again. Yeah, British Open is uh, it really is still classed as a blue ribbon event. It's one of the oldest opens in the world, and forty-one. Uh, you, you, I know you've got your name on it. It took me to the last year. Denmark was my favourite. I, I always seem to pick up some. I think that's a gold event this year. One hundred. Uh, Denmark is. I've been lucky enough to win the British Open and the Denmark Masters and the Denmark Classic. Or open, or whichever one it is. But yeah, the open and the masters, I think it is. 96. Oh, terrific crowd. I think they're just desperate. Scandinavia for one. Special player. Very much good going happening around the world of darts. 139. Real great bounce back ability about Joe Merlin tonight. I wasn't so sure if he had three wins in him, but he potentially moments away. 100. Joe requires 62. So for the match, it's double top. 
22. Carl requires 46. Well, it's deserted him when he needed it most, Carl Sneedon. Once again, he's just flattered to deceive just when he needed it. Joel Mernon, double top. Game. And it's three wins Joel out of four for Joel Mernon. He wasn't 100% sure where his game was, but he's in a very, very nice position overnight. He's put himself in an excellent position to qualify as Joel. Good averages there from Carl Snead, but once again, one from 11 on the outer ring. That's been his Achilles heel. He will be kicking himself overnight. But for Joe Mernon, job well done. It's the final game of the night. And albeit a basement clash, it's a very important game for Harry Gregory and Haruki Muramatsu. So just one game left to go on the opening night of Group B action on this the penultimate week of qualifying for the Series 6 Champions Week. And a man who has made it to finals night before, Haruki Muramatsu, is hoping to get there again. A victory in this final match would help him get halfway to doing the job. Ryan Harrington, top of the table, after winning four of his matches this evening, all four of his matches, I should say. Joe Mernon won three of his. Haruki has won... One of his is looking to make that two, but Harry Gregory is yet to pick up a single point. In fact, only has three legs to his name. If he wins, though, he will be three players tied on two points and very much all in the mix to make it into the all-important top three. And our top two will guide you through the last one. It's Glenn Durant and Scott Mitchell. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, it's a funny old game, this. And when you look at these tables... It's we hear of football managers saying about, you know, first if you're at the lower Harrington end of the table, first. you've got to beat the people around Game you. On. And this is we, we're coming to a scenario here with this group B where that is exactly the scenario there. 
the games above them, they're, they're not their league type of thing at the moment. It's the people around you. And, and Mara, Maramatsu here, if he can turn over Harry Gregory, he will put himself in a good position. But if Harry Gregory can build a little bit 84. more on what he did in his last game, and he wins this one, it really does open doors for himself going into tomorrow. Yeah, couldn't put it any better. We have said all night that Muramatsu was just didn't seem to be himself in his opening two games. Yet he could be in a fantastic position with victory over Harry Gregory. And for Harry Gregory, it's just been 59. a nightmare night. No wins out of his first three. Just one leg after his first two matches. And you know, if he had a win here against Muramatsu, and he's in joint third place. So. forty. Might be the bottom of the table clash it how it has that feel, but it has a real connotations of qualification. And remember, Scott, 60. opening game tomorrow night will be these two. Yeah, so massive for the pair of them. One hundred. Ninety-five. Harry requires one hundred and sixty. Forty. Yeah, I'd be disappointed with that. You don't want to give Muramatsu any chances whatsoever. On two or three. Yeah. And they've been thinking of that one seven one. That's the number you think of when you see two or two or three. They're still in the hands, you feel, 95. of Harry Gregory. Harry requires 120. Nice straight with the first one. Nothing silly. Bit of a blocker. He's going to have to move across. Fifty-six. So we had Haruki two bits of a blocker there and had to come out. The treble 16. It's 108. For Haruki. He'll stay there. Can't finish now. You can just see Harry Gregory itching to get to the hockey. Just, so just a little bit of composure. 56. Harry requires 64. 32. It just keeps hitting Haruki that wire. Requires 52. And Muramatsu will be surprised to come back after six visits already. But double top for a 1 0 lead. Game shot in the first leg. And one of the Haruki real qualities Muramatsu. about this Group E campaign across the board has been the finishing tonight. It's definitely been the strength. Ryan Harrington has been Second the star leg. of the show. They had that superb performance from Haruki Muramatsu in his previous game. But generally, across the board, the finishing, Scott, has been superb. 60. Yeah, it has. And... 60. Since he's changed the darts back again this evening as well. 60. Has lit the two blue touch paper for him. It was a disastrous start to the night, but... Like I said, it's how you finish. He can go back with four points, but more importantly, two points clear a third and plays Harry tomorrow. You know, going into the second game tomorrow, Haruki could be sat on six points and 100. four points clear. 100. The most frustrated player will be Carl Sneed. Just once again. 40. If he falls at the final fence when he just sees that winning line. I'm sure he doesn't always do that. It just seems to be a week of it for him, doesn't it? 133. 60. Just a couple of little readjustments there for Harry. Just see the frustrations of the young man. 
Got a match will pick that up. He'll think six starts at 201. Sixty. Harry requires one hundred and ten. Eighty two. Haruki requires one hundred and forty one. This would be special. This would be very, very special, and this will hurt Harry Gregory. Game what a the finish. Second leg. Haruki Muramatsu. Is that the finish of the day? Harry Gregory was sat pretty on the double. A 1-4-1 one one from Haruki Muramatsu. Third he leg. is having Harry good moments first. at the back end of this Game Group on. B campaign. That's got to hurt, Scott. Yeah, it sure has. 100. One hundred. Look what it means. Victory here for Muramatsu. One hundred. Just a reminder, his first game tomorrow. Muramatsu, we could put him to six points. So that will be the strategy. That will be the plan. And the other thing, 55. he would also have the darts in that fixture, the first one tomorrow, but he would have to start a little quicker than he did today because he was involved in the first game today. 58. 100 ahead is Harry. Paul Ladd must be thinking, what have I got to do to win legs here? I get myself in position. 96. The one for ones come raining down on me. Yeah, sometimes you've just got to say fair play. I mean, that for me was the finish of the day just because of the circumstances and just the way Haruki's been playing tonight. 26. Found something from somewhere. That's for sure. And now he's putting himself in a good position to be here again on Saturday night. Sixty. Eighty-four. Tough day at the office, Scott, for Harry Gregory. Just see by his body language there, the complete and utter frustration at the circumstances at the moment. Sixty. Harry requires one hundred and thirty-three. Fifty-seven. Haruki requires 130. Well, it was a 1-4-1 one one in the previous leg. And the way he's playing right now, who's to say that this is not going to go once again? Gregory sat pretty. 125. Harry requires Bit weak 76. on that one. Like you say, surely Gregory is going to hit this one. Game time yeah, absolutely. You, you get fed up Harry with people Gregory. doing that to you, and you've got to, you've got to show resilience and resistance, and that's exactly what Harry Gregory leg. did there Haruki on that seventy-six. Game on. A nice little three dart out with just the one dart at the double. That the boost that's going to get him back into this match. 80. Yeah, you sense that a 2 0 down Harry Maguire is a miracle. Seventy seven. Yeah, he's pulling away at his shirt. I don't know if he's just a little warm, but that that's clearly come out of his hand. One hundred and forty. I think the greatest start I've ever seen was in a local competition, Scott. Someone you may have heard me speak before called Peter Searle, and he hit the treble twenty. It bounced out, and then done a triple tour loop into 96. the treble nineteen. I think that was my favourite dart of all time. 
I saw somebody get excited on their first ever 180 in a league match and hit the two treble 20s and then hit double three 85. with their last. Just got absolutely body shape went, arm went all over the place. And yeah, double three and 126 scored was the result. 180. Better from Harry Maguire. <laughs> Harry Maguire. Listen, it's been a long day. Let's just say that. It's been a long, long day. Just 60. while we weren't watching American Harry football, Maguire's you said Jerry Maguire, wouldn't you? One hundred and eight. My Haruki confidence is shot now. I'm thinking about every word I'm saying, but Haruki one three six. Surely not again. One hundred. Oh, when he hit that one four one Harry finish, requires forty. The stuffing must have been knocked out of young Harry. There is a dart to win out for two two. Game That's on the an absolute play. beauty from Harry, Harry Gregory. Gregory. It was Harry Maguire. It's been Fifth a tail of two half so far. That's for absolutely sure. But he's right back in the mix now. And finding the treble 20 with ease. This is why we love this game of darts because it just changes just like that. And it was the 76 shot that changed it. With that one dart, a double top. His last visit of three and Haruki dropped off and the momentum had continued for Gregory. Just said 44. wow to himself with that big five. He's got a fantastic lead here. He needs to stand behind in that free throw preparation. It's so important. You can see him looking about there, just flicking his 100. shirt. He just looks just a little bit uncomfortable, but not to match in the palm of his hand right now. Just looks a little scruffy. 40. He does give a wee bit away with his body language, doesn't he? Just very, he's just using a lot of nervous energy behind, isn't he? And 44. Itching to get to the hockey there. But when you're desperate for your first two points. 140. Super dart. Super, super dart. Eighty-five. Harry requires one hundred and fifty-two. Sixty-four. Good board management there. But eighty-eight is certainly not a gimme. So Muramatsu's looking at at least two trebles. Let's see what he thinks of that one. Forty-five. Harry requires eighty-eight. I think he's had a few problems with the release of the dart, Scott. Yeah, I was just about to say the same. Forty-eight. I don't know whether they're not sitting quite in his hand properly, or but he's in the process of turning this game right round. And could he do that? One hundred. I'll be one Harry happy bunny. Forty. Yeah, it's definitely all to play for if Harry Gregory gets over the line here. Game John the fifth He's leg. put himself in a fantastic Harry position. Gregory. He becomes a big favourite for this match now. He knows he'd have the darts in the last leg. You can just see he's given a little bit too much away to Haruki. Sixth leg. Haruki to throw. Oh, yeah, I would look at this next leg. Game he's on. on a bit of a free roll here because he'd be a big favourite in the last leg. That's the perfect dart for Haruki. Just felt it was going to be a maximum. 140. 
85. Yeah, went with the last dart there and kind of affected everything. If he could have stood still there and maybe sort of just squared up with a ton or maybe even a ton 40. 41. And no response there from Haruki, but he knows that's a bit of a missed opportunity there. Still 100 ahead, but Harry's got his own battles right now. I think he's just got his time and just all a little bit wrong. This is difficult to see for the young man. One hundred. One hundred and yeah, nicely done by Muravatsu there. He'll just be focused on his own game right now. Fifty-eight. Consistency with Muramata's been there. He just hasn't got the balance of the dart ideal. And this leg has been almost perfect. Remember, Harry will have the dart in the last leg. Just sense the momentum with this potential 58. 13 dart. Uh, Haruki requires. As with Haruki. Surprised it went for that double five there. Yeah, just about to say the same myself. I I was thinking, oh, did, did he really need to go for it? Could he have gone for a two? Harry back on 200. He's now caused himself a few problems, hasn't he, with this 44. five? Haruki requires five. 1. Harry requires 156. Oh, for the first time tonight, we can say, Harry, this is for the match. Forty. Haruki requires Shame, because he's got this match right where he wanted to. But Haruki could be putting his game off to see his opponent struggling. Could do, but if he can hit this one, he knows the momentum would be with him, and it's no score. He can't believe Harry it's not in. One hundred and sixteen. It's nervous headache there. He scratches his forehead. Forty-one. Haruki requires four. It's a case of give me enough Game darts at it and I will leg. hit it. Haruki, and a Haruki Muramatsu does exactly that. Exactly the same averages, exactly the same first. score. Game the on. Only difference right now. But Harry has the dart, but it just seems he's got his own issues at the moment with the release of the dart, which is difficult to watch 41. for the young man. Two points here, get himself back to the hotel. And he's right in the mix. Eighty-five. This is a huge leg of darts, Scott, for all three of them players, including Carl Sneed. As Muramata will become a big favourite for qualification if he can get over the line, but from nowhere. One hundred and twenty-five. From nowhere indeed, and it's all about the flow and the rhythm. For Harry Gregory and one hundred and forty. Haruki. Aratsu applies the pressure. One hundred and thirty-three. Stuff from Harry Gregory comes straight back at him. Absolute fighting qualities here. One hundred. Without doubt, the best period of play within the match. You think it'd be the toughest for the pair of them.
96. And bullseye would have been a good shout there because it would have left a score of 100. But Muramata, we just think, and could leave at least a two data. Well, made a bit 36. of a mess of that. Advantage, Aaron Gregory. Aaron requires 106. 87 left. 50. Gregory just Haruki keeps pecking away. 140. I have a feeling that Gregory likes 28 because 78 earlier and went for the ball a couple of 43. legs ago. Harry requires 56. And it's been very, very tight all night. Harry Gregory has been second best for most of it. 36. And that is another missed opportunity. Haruki requires 97. Haruki Muramatsu hasn't been at the races tonight apart from one game. Yet he's this finish away from putting himself in a firm third place. He needs a treble 18. 57. Harry requires 20. Desperate for the win. Desperate for the double. It's double 10 for Harry Gregory, and he gets Game. there in the end. Shot. And the he match. showed some real Harry fighting Gregory. tenacity. You can just see what that means to Haruki Muramata, but what it means is that we have got a very tight group coming up tomorrow. Indeed we have, and you see Harry Gregory there. Which is very, very similar indeed, but for from nine on the doubles with what got it for him, 44% on his checkout. And if you look over there at Muramatsu, three from 13, even though he had that big 141 checkout, was still only 23% on the doubles, and that's probably where the match got away from him there. He was... Uh, it was such a big game for the pair of them, and you can understand a few nerves may well have come into it. It was uh, a tight, nervous game, and we've got to go through that again tomorrow because they're going to be the ones that start tomorrow's action. Yeah, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, Glenn, um, what an interesting end to the evening there. You spoke about it with... It looked like Haruki Muramatsu was going to be in a very strong position. Instead, it's all to play for, for that apparent third place. Yeah, it was a funny old night for Haruki, first of all. I mean, the opening part of the night, we saw him that he was, you know, a favourite to win the group. And barring one game, he was a bit of a disappointment. And look, Harry was having his own problems in that game. He had real problems with the release of the dart and the timing seemed to have gone, the belief seemed to have gone, but he got over in the line in the end. And I think the one who was most relieved with that double going in was uh, Carl Sneed. But you just sense that the top two beginning to run away with things. But what an exciting finale we've got for that third qualification spot. Absolutely. Well, let's just recap the results from the 10 matches this evening. It started with defeat for Haruki Muramatsu. It ended with defeat for him as well. But he did get a win against Sneed in the middle. Now, you mentioned that top two. The key standout result there has to be that match between Ryan Harrington and Joe Mernon right in the middle of the night. Harrington himself saying that was the one and winning it means he's probably through. Yeah, it was, a, it was a nice, confident interview with him, and I liked his answer when you asked him, you know, you, you've got one foot in for qualification now, and he's like, no, 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 I'm going to treat tomorrow where I want to win four wins out of four, and I, and I really liked that response. I thought it was really good. He's dogged, he's determined, he, probably, you know, he produced a really good performance against Joe Mernon literally five minutes after I said, where's his A, a game? Because he'll need that 95 average come Saturday night if he wants to lift that trophy and the £5,000 prize. Really pleased for Joe Mernon as well. But, um, yeah, he was the standout performer, was Harrington. What about Mernon then? Debut here at the Super Series. He gave an interview at the start of the night, kind of the opposite of what Ryan Harrington gave at the end of it when he wasn't really confident, not sure what to expect, but those doubts disappeared quite quickly. Yeah, I'm obviously clearly just off the professional circuit, but there's a bigger story with Joe Mern. He's had real health issues and, you know, lack of form, lack of belief. And look, I had very similar a few weeks ago when I stood on this stage where I wasn't quite sure. You know, my practice had picked up a little bit. So I was delighted to see Joe get finishes like that 101. And he's a, you know, he's a genuinely good guy. He's... You know, he's like I say, he's come, he's delighted that to get the invite from the Moda Super Series and he's looking good for Saturday night. Yep, absolutely is. Um, but look, the, the battle is going to be between the other three players. Ryan Harrington, 
probably a win away. Maybe doesn't even need that. Mernon looking good as well. Uh, but between Sneed Muramatsu and Harry Gregory, not Maguire, Harry Gregory, um, who's going to manage to take that spot? All to play for. Do you know, I might have said Harry, but I just got more interested about those release problems at the end there. I don't know what that was about. Muramatsu surely can't play as bad tomorrow. And for Carl Sneed, every time he puts himself in a decent position, he just seems to fall at the final fence. So I haven't got an awful lot of confidence in all three, but if I had to put one, I'd have to go with Haruki. How, how odd then that Harry won the match in which he did display visibly those problems with his it release. It just showed a little bit of fight and quality, but if you put yourself in the position of Haruki, he could have been affected to see his opponent doing that as well, and he seemed to lose his concentration. And it was a pretty flimsy handshake at the end because I think he realised he missed the trick a little bit because Haruki could have had a bit of a disappointing night but sat clear third place. Yeah, lots to think about for Muramatsu tomorrow, that's for sure. Yeah, they'll all be pondering their positions in the league table. We'll show you that now. Um, one player will be very, very happy, Ryan Harrington, although, as he said, still work to do tomorrow. Joe Mernon in a good spot as well. But it really is going to be an interesting battle between Muramatsu, Sneed and Gregory. Glenn, if we do sit at the top three there, say they go through, I mean, that's a pretty decent half a field for finals night, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course it is. We're going to have a fantastic uh, Saturday night, but I don't think Chris Gilliland sat in his hotel worried too much about it. I think he's demonstrated an awful lot of quality. But the session in the group for me, and it's not often that we say this, is that I thought Group C was fantastic today. I thought it was played at a wonderful pace and really good average, and I'm really excited to see how that one pans out tomorrow. And maybe we'll see the best from the players of Group B tomorrow, but you have to feel job well done by Ryan Harrington, and Mernon will be satisfied. Absolutely. Yep, another double session of darts tomorrow. This group concluding at 9.45 p.m. live on Sporty Stuff TV and the Motor Super Series YouTube channel, which Group C will be shown exclusively on from 1 p.m. UK time. Don't miss it. And if you're here in a couple of weeks, a warning to the players, don't miss a double. <laughs>